Let's learn and give a clear math. So today we're doing the whole of National 5 applications of maths in under five hours. The video is up in the corner here. You can see it's going through every single thing. Now this video has been like the worst video ever to produce. I must admit with you guys. The SQA with all the wisdom have all the questions split up into each individual bits A, B, C, D. So I've had to split lots of questions up. Also, there's nothing much on the net telling us exactly what's in the course, but there's bits and bobs here and there, but nothing complete and real. So I've spent ages on this video, making sure it's the most complete and comprehensive National 5 applications of video that you will ever see. Hopefully you like it. If you do, please give it a little thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel for more great videos. And good luck with your exams coming up. Stay safe, good luck, and goodbye. SQ National 5 Applications of Maths 2023, paper one, question three. The crowd at a rugby match is made up of home, away uh, supporters, and people who are neutral. Three fifths are home, two fifths are away. Calculate the remaining people that were neutral. So this is your standard adding fractions, then taken away to, to get up to one. So I need to first of all do three sevenths plus two fifths. So a common denominator is 35, that's just five times the 7 and 5 together. And obviously you can see that this one on the left has been times by 5. You can think of it as a cross, 3 fives is 15. Plus this one on the right has been times by 7, so 2 sevens is 14. 15 plus 14 is 29 out of 35. So neutral is just going to be... The difference between 35 and 39 to get back up to 35 out of 35. So 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 is 6 out of 35. And just a quick check if that's simplified. It should be, hopefully. But the only numbers that go into 6 are 2 and 3 and 6. 2 doesn't go into this number. 3 doesn't go into this number. And neither does 6. So we're done there. Question 8. Brian, Jamie and Jessica bought two medium pizzas between them. Brian ate five sevenths of a pizza. Jamie ate two thirds of a pizza. And Jessica ate the rest. How much does she eat as a fraction? In its simplest form, I'd imagine. So to work out how much the Brian and Jamie ate, we just add the fractions. Five sevenths plus two thirds. Common denominator is 21. Just by times them together. Five times three is 15. Two times seven is 14. That gives me 15, 29 over 21, which is one whole pizza with 21, 8 out of 21 left over. Now, remember, we had two whole pizzas to start with. That means Jessica must have eaten, or 8, well, 8. Out of 21, I need to get 21 out of 21. So 21 out of 21 minus 8 out of 21 to be clear. 21 becomes 11, 12, 13 out of 21s of a pizza. And I suppose you just need to check can you simplify 13 out of 21? Well, you can't because they're co prime. So we're done. Next question, National 5 Applications and Maths 2019, paper 1, question 10. A basic cookie dough mix requires butter, sugar, flour, and chocolate chips. One sixth is butter, one third is sugar, one quarter is chocolate chips. The rest is flour. What fraction is flour? So I need to add up all the fractions, then take away from one. So let's start by writing down the sum we're going to do. A sixth plus a third plus a quarter. Now three fractions to add up. Just add up two of them, then add the third at the end. So you've got one sixth plus a third. Well, a third is two sixths, because double three is two. And that's plus a quarter. So that's a sixth plus a two sixths is three sixths plus a quarter. But you might as well simplify with three sixths to a half. A half plus a quarter, and a half is two quarters. Two quarters plus one quarter equals three quarters. So now the rest is flour. So the amount of it is flour. Three quarters means I've got a quarter left over. One quarter is flour, and we're done there. Question two. Mary and John are both reading the same book and they're using an e-book reader and John is reading a hard book. Uh, John thinks he's read more book than Mary, is he correct? So Mary has read 62%. John has read 210 out of 350. So let's look at John. To start with, we've got 210 out of 350. Which as a percent 
I can times that by 100. So if I can somehow play with this fraction and get it in a percent easily enough without using decimals, we should be good to go. So let's first of all knock off some zeros to get 25, 1 over 35 times 100. And you should be able to see that 5 goes into 100 20 times and 5 goes into 35 7 times. But then 7 goes into 21 3 times. So I can divide by 7 to get 3 and divide by 7 to get 1. So I've just got 3 times 20 left, which is 60%. No, John has read less than Marie as 60% is less than 62%. QE National 5 Apps 2021 Paper 1 Question 7 Converting Fractions to Decimals Convert 3 sevens to a decimal fraction and give your answer to 3 decimal places. 3 divided by 7 is what we need to do if you're going to convert a fraction to a decimal. So setting that up, I've got 3 to be divided by 7. I know I'm going to need some decimals so I'll put a point and just put a bunch of zeros. I've put 4. Why 4? Because I'm rounding to 3 so I need an extra 1. 7 does not go into 3. So I carry my three. Seven fours are 28, 29, 30, carry two. Seven twos are 14. An extra six makes 20, so carry six. Seven eights are 56, so carry four. Seven fives are 35, and then it's going to keep going, but I'm going to do four, because I'm going to go down to three. So then our final answer to three decimal places is 0 0.429 because five says round it up to nine. And again, take your time on this, write out your seven times table if you're going to get stuck. We're going to five up because the maths 2019, paper one, question six. Write the following values and orders from biggest to smallest, greatest to least. Justify your answer. By justifying your answer, it means make them all the same so you can tell instead of just guessing, okay? So we've got decimals, fractions, and percentages. I think the easiest way to do this is to change them all to decimals. So if you try to change them all to fractions, you need to make them the same denominator. So let's have a look at our decimals. We've got 0 0.388 first, then we've got 3 eighths. So that means we've got 3 divided by 8. 8 does not go into 3. So to deal with that, I add some zeros on here. Doesn't matter how many, just a bunch. So I can keep carrying if I have to. 3 left over, 8. 16, 24, that makes 3, 6 left over. 8 fives is 40, 6 is 48, 7 is 56, 4 left over. 8 fives is 40, and then I'm done because there's no left over, so 3 eighths is 0 0.375. Now we've got a percent, 38.38 percent. To change that to a decimal, we just divide by 100. 38.38 divided by 100. To divide by 100, just imagine where the point is, and it's just going to jump back. All the numbers move. So 0.3838. So now putting them in order from biggest to smallest. The biggest one I've got is 0.39 still. And then we've got 388 or 383. 388 is next. And then I've got 383 and 375, well that's 383 then. And then 0.375. So changing them all back to the way it was, that was 0 0.39. 0 0.388. And the last one was 3 eighths. And we're done there. National 5 Up Pieces of Maths 2023, people 1 question 6. Kenny buys a new fridge, the original price was 6 50 The shop is having a sale with 20% off all fridges. It then says he goes into the shop and he gets an additional 2.5% off the sale price. How much does he pay for a fridge? Do not be tempted to take away 22.5%, 20 and 2.5. That is not what's happening here. So you're getting 20% off, then you've got a new price. Then you're taking 2.5% back off. They always try and trick you with this one, especially when you go and buy carpets, so be careful with that. Let's do 20% then. 
So 20% of 650. Well, the easiest way to do that is find 10% by dividing by 10, so that's 650, and then double it up to 20% to get £130. So we now know we're getting £130 off. So the new price, before we get the additional bit, is 650 minus that £130. That gives me 5 minus 3 is 2, and 6 minus 1 is 5. £520 is the sale price. Now I need to take away 2.5% of that. So 2.5% of £520. Now 2.5% seems quite unwieldy with a non-calculated paper. So a couple of ways you could do this. Do 25% and divide by 10, or how I always like to think of it, find 10%, half to find 5%, half again to find 3.5%. So if I find 10% of 520, that's dividing by 10, so I'm at 52. That means 5% is going to equal half of 52, which being very careful is 26. 2.5%, which is half again then, is 13. So that means my new price, my next new price is 520 minus 13 pound you might just be able to do that without any sum here and get the nans of the 507 but just in case you are doing a sum borrow from here to get one and that's 10 10 minus 3 is 7 1 minus 1 is 0 5 minus nothing is 5 so he pays 507 pound i want that there this way national five applications the maths 2018 paper one question eight ian buys a new sofa the original price was 700 pound the shop is having a sale with 25% off. When he goes to the shop, he gets an additional 5% off the sale price. Calculate the price he pays. Don't make the mistake of trying to take 30% off. That would be wrong. It's 25% off first, get the answer, and take off a further 5%. So let's work out 25% of 700. Now, you might know that 25% is a quarter, but if you don't, here's the main ones for percentages. Know how to do 10% divided by 10. Know how to do 1% divided by 100. And a handy one is 50% divided by 2. Anything else you can just make up from a combination of 10s, 1s and 50s. So let's work out, I'm going to work out 50% first just by halving. Half of 700 is 350. Because then I can just go down to 25% by halving again. So half of 3, 2 into 3 goes once. We have 1 left over. 2 7s is 14. With one left over, two fives is ten. So £175 off is how much it gets. So the sale price, don't make a mistake of thinking it's 175 that'd be a great deal, but it isn't. It's 700 minus 175. So borrow from there to make six, and that gives me 10, which I'm going to borrow straight away to make nine. And I'm going to make 10 here. So 10 minus 5 is 5, 9 minus 7 is 2, 6 minus 1 is 5. The sale price is 525. I now get an additional 5% off. So I need to work out 5% of 525 now. So again, remember I told you 10%, 1%. You can go 1% times 5 or 10% and half it. I'm going to go 10% and half it. So 10% divided by 10 is just 52.5. So 5% is half of that. So if I can't do it, I'll work it out like this. Two twos is four with one left over. Two sixes is 12. Two twos is four with one left over. No way to go, I add a zero. Two fives is 10. So it's 26 pounds and 25. So how much does it pay? Well, my previous amount was five two five. So I do five two five finally minus 26 pound and 25 pence so add a couple of zeros i'm going to borrow from here to make four and that's 10. borrow from 10 to make nine and that's 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 2 is 7. point can't do four take away six so i'll borrow from here to make 14. 14 minus 6 is 8. can't do one take away two so i'll borrow again 11 take away 2 is 9, and finally 4 take away nothing is 4. 
he pays 498.75 and we're done there. It's going now so five up because the mass 2023 paper two question eight. Jacqueline buys items online and sells them in her shop. She bought a painting for £320 and sold it for 14, four and fifteen pounds Calculate the percentage profit she made. We need to look at how much she made then out of how much she bought it for. So we do 415 minus 320. I am getting tired on this one, so let me just get a calculator. That gives me 95. So our percentage profit is 95 out of 320, which is what she started with. She made 29.6875. Oh, I need to times that by 100, sorry. Times by 100 to get as a percent, 29.69%. Part B, Jack sells his car for £950, calculate the loss as a percentage of the original price. So I need to know how much he lost, first of all. So it's 1,400 he bought it for, minus 950. Well, that's £450 loss. So as a percentage of the original price, well, that's the same as, as a fraction. So that's 450 divided by the original price, which is 1,400, times 100, because I want it as a percent. 450 divided by 1,400 times 100 is 32.14285. 32.142%, no need to round, so we're done there. It's great enough to fire up because the math 2019 people won. Question five, Alana takes out a loan of 4,500 pounds, the interest plus the administration fee is 7.5% of the loan. The total loan will be paid back in nine equal monthly payments. Calculate the monthly payment. So I need to add on 7.5% and then divide by nine. So let's start with 7.5% of 4,500. Now this is non-calculator. So I always find it easier just to find 10% and then half and half again to get 2.5% and then take away. So in other words, 10% Dividing by 10 is 450. That means that 5% dividing by 2 is 225, which means 2.5% dividing by 2 again is, well, 1, 1, half of 5 is 2.5 or 50. So that means that 7.5% is equal to Either your 5 and plus your 2.5 or your 10 minus your 2.5. I think adding is easier. So 225 plus 112 pound 50 equals 50. 5 and 2 is 7. 2 and 1 is 3. 2 and 1 is 3. That is how much 7.5% is. So the total repayment, that's equal to the loan amount, 4,500. Plus the three three seven fifty. Put a zero on there. Seven three eight four. Four eight three seven fifty is the total. So far, we have got a mark for getting three three seven fifty and a mark for realizing that we had to add that on and then we'll get a mark for now dividing by nine. And then we'll get a mark for actually getting the answer correct. So don't worry if you can't do it all, you can still get marks for your working, okay? So the last bit, I do 4837 point 50 divided by 9. So 9 times table. 9 fours is 9 ones is 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. That's 5 with 3 left over. Start again. 9, 18, 27 is 3. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 6 left over. Uh, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63 makes 7. 64, 65, 66, 67 leaves 4. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45 is 5. And then a 0. So the answer is 5, 3, 7, 50 per month. And we're done there. It's been asked five applications in March 2019. Paper two, question six. Denise bought 375 shares for £4.50 a share. She later sold them for £5.20 a share and she had to pay 2.7%
of the total selling price for commission. Calculate her profit. So we need to work out how much she bought them for. So looking at the bought price, we did 375 times 450 a share. So that's a calculator job. That gives me 1687.5, 1687.50. So that's what she bought them for. And then in terms of sold them, we've got £5.375 times £5.20. 375 times £5.20 is £1,950. Normally that would be your profit, the difference between these two numbers, but she has to pay 2.75% of the selling price. So I need to work out 2.75% and take it off. So 2.7% of 1950 That gives me 52.65. So that means that her profit is simply 19.50 minus 52.65 because that means that's how much she actually made. And then take away how much she sold them, bought them for originally, 1687.50. 19.50 minus 52.65 minus 1687.50. That is a profit of £209.85. And we're done there. SQA, National 5 Applications of Maths 2018, Paper 1, Question 10. David sat a class test, his results are shown below. Paper 1, 35 marks, and he only got 8%, and Paper 2 was out of 65 marks, and he got 60%. Calculate the number of marks achieved in Paper 1. Well, we got 80% of. 35. So again, same thing I said before about percentages, work out 10% first, or 1%, or 50%, and do your combination. So I'm going to do 10% because 8 tens is 80. So 10% is equal to 3.5 marks. So 80% is equal to 3.5 times 8. 8 fives is 40. 8 threes is 24, plus 4 is 28. He got 28 marks. Part B, calculate his overall percentage for the test. Well, we know the marks in paper one. We might as well work at the marks in paper two and do it the marks out of the total marks to get his full percentage. So his marks in paper two, he got 60% of 65. So 10% equals 6.5. So 60% is 6.5 times 6. Six fives is 30, six sixes is 36, but it's 7 for 8, 39. So we've got 39 marks. So in total, we've got 39 plus 28, 67, and it's out of 65, 70, it's out of 100. So we've got 67 out of 100, but out of 100 is a percent, so we've got 67%, and we're done there. SQA National 5 Applications of Maths 2018, paper 1, question 6. Tom thinks the answer to the following calculation is 8.7. Is Tom correct? You can't just say yes or no. You need to actually work it out. And this is bid mass question. You've got timeses and pluses. So this is our order of operations question, which bid mass does help. Now, a little note on bid mass. A lot of people make this mistake with this question. Divide and multiply are worth the same. So if it's a divide and multiply only, you just do it in the order it's written. Same with add and subtract, they're worth the same. So once you get it to just add and subtract, you do it in the order it's written. Not the order that's here, don't do add, then subtract, just do the order of the sum that is written. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to do my times sum first. So let's do my times, because multiply comes before add and subtract. So at the side, I need to do 4.6 times 3. 3 times 6 is 18, carry 1, put a point in. 3 fours is 12, plus 1 is 13. So my sum turns into 27.2 minus 13.8 plus 4.7. And if you were just remembering bid mass and thinking you do add before subtract, 
you might try and add these first and then take away from there. And that would actually be wrong. There's lots of reasons why it's wrong, but the main thing for you to remember is when you've just got takeaways and adds, do it in the order it is written now. So I do 27.2 minus 13.8. So being careful with my sums, I need to borrow to get 6 and 12. 12 minus 8 is 4. Point. 6 minus 3 is 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. So I've got 13.4 for my takeaway. So I add that on to 4.7. Showing all my working and it's helping me to do my sums. 7 plus 4 is 11. Carry 1. 4, 7, 8. And I get 1. So the answer should be... 18.1. So is Tom correct? Not correct. Tom not correct, all right. And there we go. We are done there. Five applications to mass 2023 paper two. Question one. A lake has a volume of 14,730,000 litres due to ink. Decreasing rainfall, the volume is decreased by 2.8% annually. Calculate the expected volume of the lake after three years. Give your answer to three significant figures. So this is a depreciation question. So I start off by finding my multiplier. So that's 100%. Take away 2.8%. 100 minus 2 is 98. So that's 97.2%. And I change that to a decimal divided by dividing by 100, which is 0 0.9. Seven two. So the sum I need to do is 14,730,000 times 0 0.972 to the power of 3 years. 14,730,123 times 0 0.972 to the power of 3. So that gives me an answer of 13527. 13527. 001.60704. Now it says leave your answer to three significant figures. So that means I go one, two, three and round at this point. So the two tells me to round down. So it's one, three, five, zero, 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 zero. All the way up to the point, but after the point, you just drop all of them off. Just check it's the same length. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're done there. 2022 National 5 Up Questions of Maths, paper 2, question 1 said, a soft drinks company currently has sales of 240,000 bottles in a year. It is predicted that sales will decrease by 4.2% the next year, then increase by 5.3%. Find the predicted value after three years. So this is an appreciation and de depreciation question, all in the one question. So the first thing is decreasing by 4.2%. So I need to do 100% minus 4.2%. And that gives me 95.8%, which as a decimal is 0 0.958. You just divide it by 100. Doing the same for the increase, I need to do 100% plus 5.3%. 105.3%. Or 1.053. At the moment, you have got two marks, one for getting each of those decimals. Now to get your sum. So we've got 240,000 times 0 0.958 times 1.053. And now I need to check is there any years or powers I need to add on? So it's decreased by 4.2% next year, so that's just 1. 5.3% in each of the following two years. So 1.053 squared. If I can get the squared and the sum, then I get a mark there. And then our final mark is just for getting the answer and rounding it. So we put it all in a calculator and you get 2549.37. Point three six and a bunch of other numbers, but we round that to three significant figures. So that's one, two, three. We're cutting here, so that becomes two, 
five with four rounds up to five and then I put zeros for the rest up to the points. So I've got one, two, three more numbers and I bet I put my pound sign in to be on the safe side as well. £255,000 for our final mark. SQ and answer five applications to maths 2021, paper two, question one. Omar has £300,000 which will invest for three years. He's considering these two options. Tell me which option have a greater value after three years. So this is appreciation with Best Buy, basically. So let's look at the savings account. He's got £3,000. So 2.5% per annum. So we change that to a decimal. Now that's 1.025 once you add the one. Now how do I get that? Well, let's look at a calculator. When you're doing appreciation or depreciation, you always start with 100. You either add if it's going up or take away if it's going down. So add 2.5% and change that to a decimal divided by 100, 1.025. So that's times 1.025 and it's three years, so it's cute. 3,000 times 1.025 to the power of 3 is 3230.67. Notice I'm going to two decimal places because it's money. Okay, stocks and shares. So I'll just write stocks. It says three year investment guaranteed £80 for every £1,000 invested. So he's invested £3,000, so I need to do three, because it's one, two, three thousand pound, times 80. That's 240. So he's now got 3,000, which he started with, plus 240. To do this in a calculator, 3,240. So 3,240 is bigger than 3,230. So we just say, which option will have a greater value? Stocks and shares has greater value because 3,240 is bigger than 3,230.67 and we're done there. Question 4 continued. The hotel bought a different mirror for the ballroom. The options for the mirrors are shown on the table, so you can buy some different things here, fixing back in, glass colour, thickness, standard anti-glare, blah blah blah. Right, let's just look at what it wants. The hotel bought a mirror with an area of three square metres. Okay. The hotel chose the following options for a mirror, so we need to just be very careful with pick the correct options. Option one, four millimetres thick silver glass. Four millimetre. So let's go to our table first so we get the right thing. Glass colour and thickness is the bottom. It's four millimetre. So that's bronze. That's silver. So the one we're picking is this one. Four millimetre silver. The next one says anti glare glass coating. So we're looking for glass coating is the top, standard anti glare. So I can highlight. This is the one we've picked, anti-glare. Next bullet point, standard fixings. So looking for the fixing column, which is the second one. It's a row, sorry. Basic, standard, premium, standard is the one we want. So I can mark that one. And the last bit, it's a foil backing. So backing is the third one down. No backing, foil backing. There's my foil backing here. And of course, it's going to ask us how much this costs. Calculate the total cost of the mirror. Okay, we just need to add everything up. Taking a note of the fact that we have also have an area of the mirror of three square metres, which we'll probably need. Let's do each bullet point in turn, or do it in order from top to bottom. It's up to you. I'm just going to do it by bullet point. So, four millimetre thick. So, we look at the price. It says price per square metre, £38. So, I need to do 38 times three because it's three square meters. That gives me 114. I'll put my pound signs in at the end. Now we've got our next bullet point, which is the uh, anti-glare. So let's look at the price of that one. Our anti-glare is 16 pound per square meter. So we've got 16 
times 3, because it's 3 square metres, that gives me 48. Our next bullet point, standard fixings. Standard fix. So we have £32 per miller, so that's just £32. And the last one, foil backing. Well, in the table, our backing is costing £20 per miller, so that's just £20. All the answers just get added up, that's the cost of my miller. So total cost, 114 plus 48 plus 32 plus 20 equals, not even going to bother trying to add that myself, let's get a calculator, take full use of your calculator. £214. Let's put the pound sign in. 214 And we're done there. Paper 2, question 4 said the table shows the cost of a box of sandwiches in pounds. Number of box of sandwiches ordered 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, or 30 or more. And then the price of each type. And it says for each order, the company charges £2.75 per mile for delivery. Your land at sandwich shop places an order for 20 chicken, 30 prawn, 15 egg mayo. Calculate with dis the distance travelled is 6 miles. What is the total cost of this order? So quite a bit of work to do here. Keep your head on. Let's do each bullet point separately and then add on the price for the distance. So starting off with chicken. We have got 20 chicken salad. Times. Well, 20 is in this column, 20 to 29. Chicken salad is here, £1.75. Note it is not £1.75 for all 20 boxes. It's per box. It's just that the more you order, the less you pay. And then we need to do prawn. I'll do the answers to the sums in a moment. So for prawn, she ordered 30 times. And prawn, well, 30 would be on this, this one down here. £2.05, 2.05, and then egg, well, she ordered 15 times, so I'll go along to 15, 10 to 19, down to egg, £1.45. So I need to do all of these sums, 20 times £1.75 is 35 30 times £2.05, and I'm, I'm using a calculator, 61.5 or 61 pound 50 because it's money and 15 times 1.45 i get 21 pound 75 now i need to get my total so i'm just going to add them up i'll just put a little add thing here i am not going to add this a uh, without a calculator so i get my calculator make sure i type in my numbers correctly and i get 118 pound 25 So far, we have got two marks. You would get a mark for identifying these prices without doing the sums. As long as you could identify you had the times by these numbers, you get a mark. And then a mark for getting all the answers and adding them up properly. So that's two out of three. Third part of the question, the total cost of the order. Well, we've got the cost of the order, but we need the distance. It's £2.75 per mile, six miles. So adding on my distance... £2.75 times 6, that's £16.50. So in total, we need to add them together. So we're going to add the last figures and get a final answer of £13.475. And we're done there for our third mark. It's Green National Power Up Case of Maps 2018, Paper 2, Question 3. Ross has changed his internet package and we've got a table below showing the packages he's considering. So this is reading information from a table and it says he needs 52 megabytes per second, 50 gigabytes of usage at least and a 12 month contract. What, which package will we choose with the lowest overall annual price? So he needs to choose a package that gives him everything he wants. So let's check the ones he can't have first of all. He needs 52 megabytes per second. So C's out because that's 38. So that's C gone. He needs 50 gigabytes of data or usage, so A is out. 
and unlimited is fine, 50 gigabytes fine, he needs a 12 month contract. Well, that means E is out because that's only 24 months. So that only leaves us with B and D. So we'll work out the cost of them separately and see what one's the cheapest. So let's look at B to start with. It costs £8.95 a month and £20.99 a month with an initial fee of £59.99. So I need to add these two together and times by 12 and then add on an initial fee. So that's £8.95 plus £20.99. That gets times by 12 and then we add on the initial fee of £59.99. So 2994 times 12 is 35928 plus £59.99 gives us a total of 41927. And now we'll do the same for D. So D is £7.99 a month and £18.99 a month. So take a note of that, £7.99 plus £18.99. That's still 12 months. And but then the initial fee on this one is 109.99. So we need to add that on. £7.99 plus £18.99 is 26.98. You can take a note of that if you want. Or since I've used brackets, I can just press times 12. That gives me 32376. And then add on the initial fee of 109.99. Then we get a grand total of 43375. So which one will he choose? He will choose B as 41927 is less than 43375. And we're done there. Question 10. A youth group's planning a fundraising night to help pay for a trip. The expenses for the night are shown. We sell 200 tickets. We need to make a profit of 2,000. Calculate the minimum ticket price to achieve this profit. So here's all the expenses. So the total expenses. Just add them up. 340, 50, 770 and 40. That's 9, 16, 20, that's 10, 12, that's 1,200 pound. If we want to sell 200 tickets and make a profit of 2,000, so that means that we need to do 2,000 plus 1,200. The total amount we need to make is 3,200. So I need to do 3,200 divided by 200 tickets. Knocking the zeros off, 2 goes into 3 once, 2 goes into 12 six times. Minimum price is £16. By a new dining table from a shop, it is advertised for a price of £800. She wishes to... Use a payment plan and buy the dining table, the total price is 14% more than the advertised price. This account is sold. At the quarter of the total price, 10 equal installments, a final payment. Calculate each monthly installment. Okay, total price we need to know so far first. 14% more, so 1.14. 100 plus 14 is 114% times 800. Nine hundred and twelve pound. Now, I mean, let's do each bullet point in turn. So, the first bullet point: quarter of the de total price. So, one quarter of nine hundred and twelve. Well, nine twelve divided by four. In other words, is two two eight. That's the deposit, and she's got a final payment of a hundred pound and ten equal monthly instalments. So her total price is 912. I'm going to take away the deposit of 228, but I'm also going to take away the hundred pound at the final payment, and that will tell me how much I've got left to pay over 10 months. That's 584 pounds. 
So monthly payment is equal to 584 divided by 10. £58.40. Q5. If it says to use a payment plan, the total cost of the TV using the payment plan is 84580 And the payments are as follows. One fifth of the advertised price, eight monthly instalments, and a final payment of £100. We have to calculate the monthly instalment. Let's do each bill report in turn. First, part one, one fifth of the advertised price, so of 825. So 825 divided by 5. 5 and 8 goes 1 with 3 left over. 5 sixes is 30 with 2 left over. 5 fives is 25. The deposit is 165 for a mark. So bullet point 2, we've got 84580 as the fuel price of the instalment plan. We're taking off the 165, but we've just worked out as a deposit. But remember, we've also got a final payment of 100. So that's 265 to take off to work out the monthly payments. So that gives me 80 here. 5 minus 5, 0. Borrow to make 7 and 14, 14 minus 6 is 8, 7 minus 2 is 5. So it's £580.80 left over, and I need to then divide that by 8. 8 7s is 56, leaving 2 left over. 8 2s is 16, leaving 4 left over. 8 6s is 48. And then we've got zero, so the monthly instalment is £72.60. And we're done there. Six, continue. Lorna visited Switzerland and decided to buy some cheese. The cost of five types of cheese is shown on the table, and it's 250 grams Swiss francs. Okay, so she got three different deals for buying the cheese. Best buy question here. Lorna's going to buy 250 grams of each cheese. Use working. Determine the best deal for buying all five cheeses. Use working to justify your answer. So, you know, five out of here, five out of here, or five out of here. And she's going to buy 250 grams of each cheese, right? It's already 250 grams. So we just need to now just use these prices with each deal. So just do it bit by bit. Let's do deal A. You buy all five for 18.50 francs. Okay, so that's just 18.50. There's no sum. Don't overly complicate things. It's not saying 18.50 each or anything. It's 18.50. So we're, we're giving us that one. So part B says buy all five and get the cheapest free. Okay, so all five, you get the cheapest free, which is this one. So we just don't add them together. So we just need to add these four numbers. So £2.50 £2 plus £7.50 plus 7 plus 3 because the other one's three anyway. So it's 750, 8950, 20. It's going to be 20 in total, 20 francs. Use your calculator if you have to at any point. Part C, buy all five and save 15%. Okay, so I need to buy all five. £2.50. It's not pounds, it's francs. 7.50. 7. 3 and 2. Well, I've already worked out the previous was 20, so that's 22 francs. You save 15%, so you get 15% off. So there's two ways to do that. Since we're on a calculator paper, Take away 15% to get 85% and times by 0 0.85, or work out 15% and take it away. I'll do it the first way because it's quicker. So if you're going to save 15%, that means you're going to pay for 85%. So 0 0.85 times 22. No way I'm doing that without a calculator. 18.70. Determine the best deal. So we started off with 1850. B was 20 and C is 1870. Let's just highlight the ones there. Therefore, deal A is the cheapest and therefore the best buy. Deal A is best as it's the cheapest. You could then say to be over egg in this 18. 0.50 is less than 20 and 18.70. Let's just leave it. The National 5 application last 2022, paper 2, question 6b says, a customer wants to buy 12 powder fire extinguishers and 12 stands. The recommended price of one powder is £78 and the price of a stand is £15. But the following deal is available. 
company A, company B, company C. The, to encourage a company to buy from him instead, Pepe offers a 5% discount on the cheapest of these deals. How much will Pepe charge the company? Well, we're going to have to work out how much each deal is to find the cheapest one and then take away 5%. So company A. It says, buy two fire extinguishers and get one free. So, I'm buying 12. Every time you buy two, you get one free. So that is three fire extinguishers. So I need to do 12 divided by three, which is four. So that means I'm going to get four deals. Which means I'm going to do four times two, which is eight fire extinguishers. So I need to work out the cost of eight fire extinguishers. Eight times £78. But then I've got the price of the stands. The recommended price of one stand is £15. But all stands are reduced by £2.50. So that now makes £12.50. Um, so I need to add on 12 times £12.50. Do both of these sums in a calculator and add them together and you will get £774. Okay, deal B, so remember we're buying 12 of each. Deal B says a sick for the recommended price of all five extinguishers and you get a free stand. So we don't need to work at the price of any of the stands, we just need to do a sixth off the price of the five extinguishers. So the recommended price is £78, so we can do one sixth of 78 78 divided by 6, in other words, is 13. So the price of the establishment is 78 minus 13. 65 each. And we're buying 12. 12 times 65 is £780. Now we just need to check C. C says 12 powder fire extinguishers and 12 stands for £900. Oh, well, no something to do there, it costs £900. So, best deal equals A, because it's the cheapest. And then it says, to encourage people to buy from it, it gets 5% discount. So I need to do 5% of 774. Again, this is all calculator, we could do it without. £38.70, that's how much you're getting off, so it's 774 minus 38.70, gives you a grand total of 73550 for your final mark. Now the marks on this are a little bit rubbish, you get one mark in total for doing A, so if you do any A wrong, you, get, you lose a mark. You get one mark for doing B, and then one mark for your final. I note on the final one as well, instead of doing 5% of it and then taking it away, you could have done it using the multiplier method and just done 0 0.95 times 774, and you would have got the answer straight away. And a three bedroom farmhouse. It also gives us the annual council tax payment um, here for each band. So it tells us the band there. Band F for this one, so I'd have to identify that one. Band E for this one, which would be this one. And this one says included everything, so I don't need to look for the band. And I presume this is a best buy question. It says, which property is the cheapest option? Use working to justify your answer. Well, it means I need to work at the price for each property then. So let's start off with the two bedroom house. Two bed house. It says total monthly cost is 730, it includes everything. So no sum to do, that's £730. Let's look at the one bedroom apartment. Let's just call it the one bed. So that one is weekly rent of £132, council tax band F, and weekly electricity of 12. So first of all, for the weekly, I've got 132 plus 12. That's 144 per week. Now I want to compare like for like. So I'm going to get everything back to monthly or everything to annual. It's up to you. I'm actually going to get everything to annual because it'll be easier. So I'm just going to times that by 12 to find the annual. Which is 
that one's 8760 per year. This one is 144 per week, so times 52. That's 7488. But I need to add something to this. The property is a band F. Band F is here, 216864. So this is why I'm doing it in annual, because it means I don't have to do any division at the end. That's the annual council tax. So plus 216864. And that is 9656664. Nine, and that's per year. So that's me now done that one. So I now do the three bedroom. So it says monthly rent 390, monthly electric 76. So I do 390 plus 76. Using a calculator if I want, that is 466. That's per month, so I times that by 12. That's 5592. And then I need to add on the council tax band, which is E183492. And finally, we get 7426.92 for that one. So which one's the cheapest? Well, we've got 8760. That's Then we've got 9656. And then we've got 7426.92. So the three-bedroom farmhouse is the cheapest. Three-bed farmhouse is the cheapest. And we're done there. Five up, case of mass 2023 paper one question four. Jeffrey shared his savings between his three children, Sophie, Ed, and Lucy. The money was shared in the ratio of seven to two to six. It says Sophie received £3,304. How much did Jeffrey give his three children? How much did Jeffrey give his three children in total? So there's a ratio of seven to six. That's Sophie. Suppose that's Ed and Lucy. And we know that Sophie's share was 3304. And her share is worth seven parts, so I need to divide by seven to get one part, and then I can times by either the whole total or I can find Ed's and Lucy's and then just add it all together. But let's just find one part first. So one part is equal to 3304 divided by seven. Now, if you don't know your seven times table, just take a quick note of it at the side, but I do, so I'm just not going to do that. Seven times four is 28. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33 gives me five left over. Seven sevens is 49, leaving one. Seven twos is 14. So one part is equal to 472 pound. So then I could either times by two and times by six and add it all together. Or I could realise that I've got 7, 8, 9, 15 parts in total. So I could just times this number by 15, which is what I'm going to do. But either option is working for you. So total parts is equal to 7 plus 2 plus 6, which is 15. So total amount, I need to do 15 times 4, 7, 2. So let me just set up a normal sum like this. Or you could times by 10 and times by 5 and add it together. Or times by 10 and half it and add it together. There's lots of options here, but I'll just do a standard sum. 5 twos is 10, carry 1. 5 sevens is 35, plus 1 is 36. 5 fours is 20, plus 3 is 23. And then 10. So it's 1 times 2, 1 times 7, 1 times 4. Carefully adding these together. I get zero, six and two is eight, seven and three is 10, carry one, four, five, six, seven. So the total amount is equal to, with a pound sign, 7,080 pound. And we're done there. Bar charts and ratio. SQA National 5 Apps 2021, paper one, question eight. The bar chart below shows the medals won by four countries in the 2016 Olympic Games. So we've got gold, silver, bronze shown on the bars by these different shadings, I suppose. 
And part A says calculate the number of medals won by the UK in the 2016 games. So the number of gold medals, sorry. So 2016 games for UK is here. I need the gold. So we're starting at 40. We need to know what's going up in. So we've got one, two, three, four, five divisions. So it's going up in twos. So I'm on six, 40, that's 10, 20, 22, 24, 26. And the middle makes 27. So we can just write 27 for our answer to that one. Part B says calculate the ratio of gold to silver to bronze medals for France. So we need to know France's gold, silver, bronze. So let's do our gold first for France. We have got 30, 32 we're on. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 with the first number. So I'll just note these as I go. We've got 10, 2, the silver. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. 18. And the last one, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So initially we get 10 to 18 to 14. So then we need to simplify that. So we need to find a number that goes into all three of them. I can see they're all even, so I'll just half them. So that gives me 5, 9, and 7. And there, I can't simplify that anymore. So I'm done there. Next way, National 5 application of maths for 18, paper 2, question 6. Ali, Kate, and Jim are paid to, the, paid to deliver leaflets advertised in a new restaurant. They shared the money they were paid in the ratio, so it's a ratio question, 357. Jim received 154. How much did the restaurant pay in total? So let's just write this out. The ratio is 3, 5, and 7. Uh, the order is Ali, Kate, and Jim. And it tells me that Jim's paid 154. So let me put 154 under Jim. So if 154 is paid to Jim and his bit's worth seven pieces, to what I could work out one piece, then work times by five and three to work out the other bits, or times by the total of the ratio to work out the total bits. So I do 154 divided by seven. That gives me 22. And now adding the ratios up, because I want the total, 3 plus 5 plus 7 is 15. So the restaurant will pay in total 15 lots of 22. 15 times 22. 330 pound. And we're done there. SQA National 5. Application of Maths 2022 paper 2, question 7 says, Part A, Jamal keeps fish. To make tap water safe for fish, a condition is added. The volume of condition required is directly proportional to the volume of the tap water. 5 mils of condition is used for every 20,000 millilitres of tap water. Calculate the volume condition for 40 metres. So we know that 5 millilitres is used for 20,000 millilitres of water. And that's conditioner. I'll just write conditioner. What's the volume for 40 meters? So, so let's do one meter divide by 20. So five divided by 20. Two five milliliters. And then we can go to 14 meters by times and by 14. To get 3.5 milliliters for our final. Okay, proportion. SQA National 5, application of maths, 2021, paper 1, question 14. A 340 gram steak costs £3.84, complete the label shelf to show the price per kilogram. So 240 grams is equal to £3.84. And I want to get up to one kilogram eventually. We know 240 grams is equal to £3.84. And we want to know what a thousand grams is. So you can have a go down to one gram, you can always do that each time, or you can do a bit of clever maths to get there. It's up to you. What I'm going to do actually is get as close to a kilo as I can. So if I times both this by four, that gives me 960 grams. So I'll know the price of 960 grams by times in this by four. Four fours is 16. Four eights is 32 plus one is 33. Four threes is 12, 34 and 15. So that'll take me to 15 pound and 36 pence. But I'm short by 40 grams. So I need to know the price of 40 grams. 
Well, if I do 240 divided by 40 grams, that's knocking the zeros off, gives me six. 40 goes into 246 times. So that means I can know that 40 grams is also equal to three pound 84 divided by six. Six fives are 36, sixes is 36, carry two, six fours is 24. So I now know 40 grams is equal to zero pound 64. So that means that one kilogram just equals 15 pound 36 plus 0 0.64, which is 0, 0, 6, 0, or 16 pound. And we're done there. SQA National 5 Application to Maths 2019, paper 1, question 12. Kieran and Gemma have each set themselves a monthly electricity allowance. Kieran set himself an allowance of £42, Gemma £49. At the end of July, the smart meters recorded that Kieran has used £15, Gemma has used £21. Determine who used the greater proportion of their allowance. So a better proportion just needs to be a fraction, really. So let's look at Kieran. He's used 15 out of 42. Whereas Gemma, she's used 21 out of 49. So we're trying to compare two fractions. The only way to compare two fractions is to make the denominators the same or change them with decimals. So let's see if we can make these denominators the same by simplifying. If we look at Kieran's side, 3 goes into 15 five times. And 3 goes into 42, well, I've got 1 with 1 left over. And 3 fours is 12. So Kieran is 5 out of 14. Looking at Gemma's simplification, well, 7 goes into both of eight numbers. 7 threes is 21, and 7 sevens is 49. So we're getting somewhere, but we're not quite the same yet. But luckily, 7, double that, you get 14. So I can now change Gemma's to 6 fourteens, and now it's easy. Gemma has used a greater proportion since 6 out of 14 is bigger than 5 out of 14. And we're done there. Hey, SQA National 5 Applications of Maths 2023, paper 1, question 12. Laura makes and sells fruit smoothies. She has tested by kiwi fruit in bulk. She considers the following options. Option 1, 35 kiwi fruit for £5.95. Option 2, 45 kiwi fruit for £8.10. Determine which offer offers the best value for money. Use work to justify your answer. Often you want to go back down to one thing, but with a non calculator paper, that can be quite tricky sometimes. I'd have to divide by 35 or 45. If I can find a way to get down to maybe 5 or 10, it might be easier. Now, you, you do, these both end in 5, so if I can divide this one by 7, 7 fives is 35, that'll get me down to 5 kiwi fruits, and 9 fives is 45, so I'll divide that one by 9, I'll get down to 5 kiwi fruits. So I'm going to examine 5 kiwi fruits. Option 1. 35 kiwi fruits cost 5.95, so I can say 35 kiwi equals £5.95, and then that means dividing by 7, 5 kiwi is equal to, I'll need to do a sum here, £5.95 divided by 7, so 7 doesn't go into 5, so I'll put a 0 point and carry the 5. 7 eights are 56, 57, 58, 59 gives me 3 left over, 7 fives are 35, so 5 kiwi fruit is equal to £0.85, or if you prefer, 85 pence. So now we look at option 2. Option 2 says that 45 kiwi fruit equal £8.10. I want to get back down to 5 kiwi still, so dividing by 9, because 9 fives is 45, gives me 5 kiwi. So that means that I need to do £8.10 divided by 9. 9 doesn't go into 8. Carry okay, 8. 9 nines are 81. 9 nothings are nothing. So £0.90 or 90 pence. So which Option is the best value for money? Well, the cheapest one for five kiwi. Therefore, option one is better value. 
cents L by 0 pound 85 is less than 0 pound 90 or 85 pence is less than 90 pence. And what that means. Garden. It normally takes a team of four workers 12 hours to complete the task. The company sent an additional worker to help complete the task. All the workers work at the same rate. We started at 8, took a 30 minute break for lunch. What time did they finish installing the hot tub? Okay, so this is reverse proportion, inverse proportion. Okay, so you, know, you think that if you're doing work, the more people that do the work, the less time it takes. So four workers usually take 12 hours. So to do one worker, well, if this was a me baking a cake, I would divide by four and it would take seven three hours. That makes no sense. One worker's not going to take three hours, not unless he's in Captain America or something, or a flash. So it's the opposite, inverse proportion, 12 times four. 12 times four hours, which equals 12, 24, 48 hours. So I now know one worker takes 48 hours and it says how many workers have we got? An additional worker. So we're going to five workers now. So now we can divide. We know it's 48 hours for one worker. Divide by five to get a smaller number. 48 divided by five. I'm going to get a few minutes of decimal. 9.6 hours. The usual with this, you get a decimal time, so you're going to have to change that decimal time into hours and minutes. So to change 9.6 hours into hours and minutes, well, we've got 9 hours, and then to get our minutes, we've got 0 0.6 hours, 60 minutes in an hour, so times by 60. I can do that without a calculator, but let's just do it with anyway. 0 0.6 times 60 is 36. So it's 36 minutes. Now to answer the question, they started at 8 and took a 30 minute break for lunch, what time do we finish? So we're starting at 0800 and then we're adding, add to 30 minutes anytime you want, just wait to the end. Let's just add our 9 hours. 8 plus 9 is 17. I'm going to write 1700. I'm not going to bother trying to change that into PM or AM, it's 5 o'clock of course. Add my 36 minutes and I get 1736. I think you add 30 minutes. Easiest way to do that is add up to the next hour first. So 36 becomes 46. 56 is 24 minutes, which leaves me an extra six minutes left over to get to 1806. So we finish at 1806. Just check we don't ask you for it in AM or PM. It doesn't ask, so it's fine. And they gave us it in 24 time anyway. SQA National 5 Applications and Maths 2022 Paper 2, Question 4B. A company receives an order for 100 sandwiches. It takes seven employees, seven employees, 44 minutes, and it makes 100 sandwiches. And we want to know how long it takes. 11 employees to make a, the same 100 sandwiches. So usually if it wasn't what done problem here, I would divide by 7 to get one employee, 44 divided by 7, and then times by 11 to get 11 employees. But because it's what done, it will take less time, not more. So it's the inverse, it's, it's, it's inverse proportion. So instead, the sum we need to do for the middle part is 44, and we times that by 7, and then we divide our answer by 11. So let's just do it in stages. 44 times 7, we get 308. So we do 308 divided by 11 employees, and we get a final answer of 28 minutes. For three marks, the three marks here are knowing you had to times by seven and divide by 11. So if you've got times seven divided by 11 anywhere, even if your sums are wrong, you will get a mark anyway. And then a mark for each of the sums, okay? Now you could obviously do the sums in one go if you wanted to, and that'd be fine as well. Let's go to Five Applications, Maths for 18, Paper 2, Question 5. 
three tons of sheep food will feed 350 sheep for 18 days. The number of sheep increases by 100. How long will the same food now last? So this is called reverse proportion. So we know that 350 sheep will be fed for 18 days. I want to work out how much 450 sheep will be fed for. So why is this inverse proportion? Well, it's either work done or it's getting fed. If you think about these sheep, if I was to say, well, how long does the food last one sheep? Clearly it lasts a lot longer. So you're not going to do 18 divided by 350 because that means that one sheep, it would only last like hours. So that makes no sense. So, it's, so for one sheep, since this is inverse proportion, it's 350 times 18. Which is 6300 days. Which means for 450 sheep, I now divide by 450. 6300 divided by 450. Fourteen days, which makes sense. More sheep, less days. So if you get an answer like more sheep and it lasts more days, that doesn't make sense. That means the sheep are eating less. Applications of Maths 2022, paper two, question six D. Pepe inspects to the fire extinguishers of a local business. The fire extinguishers are considered safe if they weighed ten point four kilos plus or minus ten percent. The weights of the fractions inspector showed. What's the maximum and minimum weights and determine the fraction that was safe? It's okay. So our max and our min. If we're adding 10%, we can times by 1.1, .1, or we can just do 10% and then add it on. It's up to you. 1.1 .1 times 10.4, or like I said, do 10% of 10.4, then add it on. That gives you a maximum of 11.44 kilograms. And then taking away 10% from 100% is 90%, so that's 0 0.9 times 10.4, which will give me a minimum of 9.36 kilograms. Or alternatively, like I said, do 10%, which is 1.04, and then just take that away from 10.4 to get 9.06, 36 and add it on to get 11.44. Now we need to work out how many are safe. So it has to go between 9.36 and 11.44. So you can just tick the ones that are okay. That one's okay. 11.67 is not okay. 9.12 is lower. 10.94 is in between. 11.10 is in between. 9.27 is too small. And 10.55 is in between. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 that are safe out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in total. So it's 4 sevenths that are considered safe for our final mark. 1 for max, 1 for min, 1 for final. Screen answer 5 application of maths 2019 paper 1 question 1. Helen makes and sells candles. These candles should be 22.5 centimetres tall. She rejects any candles that are out with this range plus or minus two millimeters of this height. Below the heights of 10 candles at chosen at random, calculate the percentage that she rejects. So the first thing we need to do is find the max and the min. So the max it can be is equal to 22.5 plus two millimeters. So 0 0.2 equals 22.7 centimeters. And the min is 22.5 minus 0 0.2, which is 22.3 centimetres. And that's a the mark there. Next step, work out which ones are rejected. So anything below 22.3 or above 22.7. So that one's rejected. 22.6 is okay. 22.5 is okay. 22.9 is too big. 22.3 is okay. 21.6 is out. 22.6 is okay. 22.4 is okay, 22.7 is okay, 22.8 is out. So four are rejected. So rejected, we have got four out of 10. And out of 10, I need to make that a percent. You, need, you should know that's 40% because it's out of 100 is percent. That's 40, just times it by 10 or 40%. 
and we're done there. A baking company will reject cakes if they don't weigh 400 grams plus or minus 3%. The weights of a sample of baking cakes are shown below. Calculate the fraction that will be rejected. So this is a tolerance question. So let's jump straight into it. We need to find the max and the min. So we've got 400 grams plus or minus 3%. So I'm gonna to have to work out 3% of 400 to work out my max. So to work out a percent of an amount with non-calculator, usually find 10% or 1%. I'm going to find 1%. So dividing by 100, that's taking away two zeros. It gives me four grams. So that means that 3% equals four times three, which is 12. So that means that my max, it could possibly be, is equal to 400 plus the 12, 412 grams. And my min, it could possibly be, is 400 minus 12. Well, that is 388 grams. And now you just look for the ones which are not between those two numbers. So let's have a look. 385, well, that's below, so I can knock that one off. 391's okay. 409's okay, 403's okay, 386, oh that's below as well, 412's okay, 413 is above, 407's okay, 400's okay, 390's okay, 387's below, 405's okay and 388's okay. So I've knocked off four, make sure you mark off which ones you're rejecting. Then my fraction rejected, I'll just write down rejected. Is one, two, three, four out of, and it was 13 cakes, four fair teams. If it's not simplified, simplify it, but this is simplified, so I'm done there. Explain that for five. I've guessed the maths, touch like three people, one question. Five. Eddie runs a stall at a school fundraiser. The game requires two spinners to be spun and allowed to come to rest. The spinners are shown, so we've got one spinner of which is colours and one is numbers. A prize of all is one if one spinner lands on blue or green and the other spinner lands on an even number. Calculate the probability of not winning a prize. There is lots of ways to do this, but one of the standard ways is to work out all the probabilities with a sample space diagram is what it's called, or you may just know it as a table. So on one side I'm going to write red, green, yellow, one red again, and then we've got blue. That's our options for the first spinner. And the second spinner goes one, two, three, four, five. Might be handy just to call that R, G, Y, R, B. So in the middle is all the chances of things happening, right? So we've got red and one could happen, R1, R2, red and three, red and four, red and five. Or we could go green in one, green in two, green in three, green in four, green in five. Or we could go yellow in one, yellow two, yellow three, yellow four and yellow five. Or we could get back in red in one, red in two, red in three, red in four, red in five. Or we could get blue in one, blue in two, blue in three, blue in four, blue in five. So there's all the things that can happen from getting two spinners. Now it says a prize is one if the spinner lands on blue or green and the other spinner lands on an even number. So let's start highlighting the winning cells. We can have blue, which is the bottom ones, and it has to be even. So two is a winner and four is a winner. It also wins if it lands on green with an even number. Two is a winner, four is a winner. So we've got one, two, three, four winners. Is that right? Blue and green. And even, well, there's only four winners. So how many losers is there? Well, we can either count them or use a bit of maths. We've got five by five options is 25. Take away these four means I've got to lose a chance of 21 out of 25 possibilities. Just double check that that is simplified. That's simplified, so we're done. But with this question, there is a number of ways you could do this. Basically, you just need to calculate how many chance probabilities are there, what's the chances of all the things, and you need to work out how many things you don't want to happen. 
Now, you could have worked out how many things you did want to happen, then add up to one, and list them in any way, but that's one of the neatest ways to do it. Question five, Jade runs a game store at Christmas Coffee Morning. Her game requires two spinners to be spun, and these are these are the spinners. The answers are multiplied together. To win a prize, you have to get an answer of greater than 30, calculate the probability of winning a prize. So I just need to list all the possibilities. So down one side, we've got two up to six. And the other side, we've got zero up to 12, even numbers. We're multiplying all these results together. So we've got zero, four, 8, 12, 16, 28, 24, 50, 60, 0, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, and 72. And to win a prize, we need a number greater than 30. So we've got this one, we've got this one, this one, and this one. We've got this one, this one, and this one. And then we've got this one, this one, this one, and this one. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 35. 7 times 5 is 35. The games at the event are a Lucky Dip and Dice game. The Lucky Dip has tickets numbered 1 to 150. To win a prize, the ticket needs to end in a 0 or 5. The Dice game involves rolling two dice at the same time. To win a prize, a total of 9 or more is needed. Determine which game has a higher probability of winning. So let's look at the lucky dip first. Got number of tickets from 1 to 150, so it's 150 tickets. But to win a prize, you need to end in 0 or 5. So if I end in 0 or 5, I can have 0 and 5. Keep going with that, you've got 10 and 15, and so on. So for every 10, two of them can win. So that is. I've got 15 lots of 10, because it's 15 times 10 is 150. So 2 times 15 winners, which equals 30. And that's 30 out of 150 tickets. Now this is a calculator question, so you don't need to simplify that. You can just do 30 divided by 150, which is 0 0.2. So there's a 0 0.2 chance of winning. OK, let's look at our dice game. Two dice at the same time, a total of nine or more. So this is where you set up a table for this. It's called a sample space diagram, actually, but you don't need to know that. You've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So there's your two dice, and you just add up the totals in the middle. So let me just do that in red. So you've got one plus one is two, then three, then four, then five, and six, and seven. 2 plus 1 is 2, then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 3 plus 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3, then 2 plus 2 is 4, then 5, 6, 7, 8. 3 plus 1 is 4, then 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then you get the idea, you go 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Just adding up, 5 and 1 is 6, then 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 6 and 1 is 7, then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And to get a prize, it is a score of 9 or more. So let's find the ones that are 9 or more. So there's one there, then 9 and 10, then 9 and 10 and 11, then 9 and 10 and 11 and 12. So how many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. How many is there in total? Well, it's 6 by 6, so that's 36. That is 0 0.277 forever. So the two probabilities were 0 0.2 and 0 0.277. So therefore, the dice game 
has higher probability of winning. Because 0 0.277 is bigger than 0 0.2. I want that there. It's been asked by Raptors and Maths, so 18, paper 1, question 14. Michael's underscore a school fair. The game requires two spinners to be spun and they're both shown below. So we've got 1 to 5 and then we've got 0 up to 6. The numbers on the spinners are multiplied together and to win a prize, the multiplication must be less than 5. Calculate the probability of winning a prize. So this is two way probability. I'm times in the two answers together. So I need a table to show all the possibilities. So you draw your table. It's got a sample space diagram, technically. And on one side, we put the first one. So that's 1 to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the other one, we've got 0 to 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And often these are either getting added or times together, but in this case, it's times. So in the middle goes all my numbers, all my answers. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6. Doing all your time sums, 2 nothings is nothing, 2 ones is 2, 2 twos is 4, then 6, then 8, then 10, then 12, then the 3 times table, nothing, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 4 times table, nothing, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and finally, the 5 times table, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. So to work out how many things there are in here, you just count them all. Or you can count how many there are here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down the way, 7 by 5. That's 35 possibilities. So I know my probability of winning a prize is out of 35. So we just need to work out the probability of winning a prize, and it says... So when applies to this multiplication must be less than 5. So we just need to highlight the ones that are less than 5. So we'll just use a different colour. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 are less than 5. The rest are bigger than 5. So probably when the prize is simply 13 out of 35. So I'm going to write that beside in the right colour. 13 out of 35 is our final answer. Simplify it if you can, but this cannot be simplified, so we're done there. To be national five up, this is maths 2023, paper one, question eight. Janet travelled by car from her home to a meeting. She arrived at the meeting at 10.15. She travelled 160 miles at an average speed of 40 miles per hour. During the journey, she stopped 50 minutes for breakfast. Tell me how much time Janet left home. So, we know she arrived at 10.15, so that's like way over here. That's our arrival at 10.15, say. Um, and she travelled for 136 miles at an average speed of 40 miles per hour, so we need to work out the time for that. So let's just make a note of that. We need to work out that time. But then, during the dinner, she stopped 15 minutes for breakfast. So I can take away that 15 minutes to start with. So going back 15 minutes... So the easiest way to do that is take away your 15 minutes, so that gets me to 10 o'clock, and then the difference, 25, 35, 45, that leaves 35 minutes off of 10 o'clock, so that's 9.30, Let's just say she stopped there, it doesn't really matter what, when she did a break. So then the time, well, speed, The time, well, distance equals speed times time. A couple of ways you can do this, if you can remember all your formulas, or a triangle sometimes help, the distance speed time triangle, where we want to work out time, so we couple it up, and it says distance divided by speed, or we can just rearrange the formula, time is distance divided by speed. Whatever way you do it, you get distance divided by speed. The distance is 136, and we're dividing by 40. You will probably have to do a sum for this then. 136 divided by 40, 40, 81, 20 is 3, decimal point, time then, add some zeros, it doesn't really matter how many, I'm on 120, so I need 16 left over, now start counting again, 40, 80, 120, 160, that goes in exactly 4 times, so I'm now on 3.4 hours, which is kind of useless to us. 
0.4 of an hour, I'm going to have to change that to minutes. So 3.4 hours. So I've got 0 0.4 hours is equal to 0 0.4 times 60, because it's 60 minutes in an hour. But it's 24 minutes. How did I do that so fast? Well, if I think about times in by 10, first that takes me to 4, and then it's just 6 left, 4 6 is 24. So 3.4 hours is equal to 3 hours, 24 minutes. So we'll go back up to my little diagram. I need to take away 24 minutes. So let's take away the 24 minutes. That leaves me with 9.01 a.m. And then I need to take away the 3 hours. 9.876.01 a.m. So just to answer the question, left home at 6.01 a.m. And we're done there. The of this question says the final event of the heptathlon is an 800 metre run. In this event, another of the competitors scored a thousand points. By referring to the table, calculate this competitor's average speed over the 800 metre run. Give your answer in metres per second. So let's have a look at the table. 800 metre run, 1000 points. So the 800 metre run is over here. We got a thousand points, which is here. So where they cross, it took them two minutes and eight seconds. So there's a key number. It tells us a time, two minutes, eight seconds. So I can write the time equals two minutes and eight seconds. I know the distance because it's an 800 meter run. And I have to work out the speed. Well, there's lots of ways you can memorize all your speed, distance, time equations, or know one of them and rearrange it. Or one simple way is distance, speed, and time. And we want to work out the speed. So if we just cover up the speed, it tells us to do distance divided by time. So speed is distance divided by time. Now we need to make sure we get this right. Our time is quoted as meters per second. So I need all this in seconds. So the first thing I need to do is change my time from two minutes, eight seconds, all to seconds. So my time, working on that, well, two minutes is two times 60 seconds, which is 120. So our total time is equal to 128 seconds. So now I can do my sum, 800 meters divided by 128 seconds. Using a calculator, you get 6.25 meters. Because Mass 2021, paper two, question six continued. At the weekend, from where Matt plans to make a return journey from his home to the shopping centre. It's 26 miles away, it will cover 67 kilometres per gallon, and he has five litres of fuel in his tank. Determine if Finlay has enough fuel to complete his return journey. And it gives us two bits of information. One mile is 1.609 kilometres and a gallon is 4.545 litres. So we know how much gallons, how, much, how far he travels per gallon of fuel. So I need to know how much gallons he has. So I've got five litres. And we know that one gallon equals 4.54 litres. So five litres divided by 4.54. Or five will tell me how many gallons he has. That gives me 1.1 gallons. Let's just keep a note of that. Now we get 67 kilometers per gallon, so how far he can travel must be 67 times 1.1. So I've kept that number in the calculator, so I'll just times that by 67. And that gives me 73.707. Let's just call that 73.707 kilometers. So I know he can travel 73.707 kilometers, but it says the shopping center is 26 miles away. So I need to know what that is in kilometers. Or I can change the kilometers into miles. I'll probably I'll change the kilometers into miles. 
So it says one mile is 1.609 kilometers. So if one mile is that, 73.707 kilometers equals 73.707 divided by 1.609. We'll tell me how many miles it can go. That gives me 45.81 miles. Now it looks like you can do it, but it says it's a return journey which try to trick us. So it, the shopping center for a return is 26 times two, which is 52 miles. So he cannot make it because he can only go for 45.81. So the answer is no, since he can only go 45.81 miles, which is less than the two miles. And we're done there. S Green National 5 Application of Maths, 2018, Paper 2, Question 7. Sam drives from Paris to Zurich and he knows his car will cover 47 miles per gallon of fuel and the fuel tank holds 50 litres and it's 650 kilometres from Paris to Zurich. Will we be able to complete it on a tank of fuel? So it gives us a few conversions, so we're doing some conversions here. One mile is 1.609 kilometres and a gallon is 4.54 litres. So we're just going to try each bullet point in turn and see if we can get anywhere with this. His car will cover 47 miles per gallon of fuel. Great. 47 miles, but I've got it in kilometers. So bullet point one, it'll do 47. One mile is 1.609 kilometers. So times 1.609. And that'll tell me how many kilometers he does in a gallon. He does 75.623. Now I'm not going to round because there's going to be a lot of sums. 75.623 kilometers per gallon. Next bullet point says the fuel tank holds 50 litres of fuel when it is full. But I don't know much about that. I know gallons. I know I'm getting 75.623 kilometers per gallon. So I'm going to turn that into gallons. So I'm starting off with 50 litres, so I've done bullet point one, bullet point two, I'm starting off with 50 litres. I want to go backwards to gallons, so I'm going to divide by 4.545. So that's 11.0011. Gallons. It now says it's 650 kilometres from Paris to Zurich. Well, I know I get 75.623 kilometres for every gallon, and that's how many gallons I've got. So I just times them together to see how far I get. So for bullet point three, I'm doing 75.623 times 11.0011. That gives me 831.94 kilometers. So the answer is yes, since 831.94 kilometers is less than 650. Now, if there's other ways to tackle this question, Jack wants an item sent from her Dubai shop to her New York shop. It will be sent from her Dubai shop at 8.45 local time on the 24th of November. The expected delivery time is 90 hours. Wow. New York is five hours behind Edinburgh. Dubai is four hours ahead of Edinburgh. Determine the local time and the date might expect to arrive at her shop in New York. Got a big one this one for the, uh, the end here. So, 90 hours. We need to work out how many days and hours that is. So I need to do 90 divided by 24. So that's 3.75 days. So that's three days 
Then the 0.75 part was well, 25, 24 hours in a day. So that's 18 hours. Now, she's in Dubai at 8.45 a.m. And it tells us different times for Edinburgh compared to New York and Dubai. So let's just work out this and then we'll add in the different times. Okay, so we're at um, 8.45. So I need to add on 18 hours. So 8 plus 18, if you just use a calculator for that, is 26. But once I hit midnight, it's a new day, okay? So it goes 8, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, or zero, then one, two. So I'm on two o'clock in the morning, 45 the next day. So that was starting on the 24th of November. So I'm now on the 25th, after 18 hours. I'm now going to add three days. 25, 26, 27, 28. So I'm now on the 28th at the same time. But this is Dubai time. Now I need to work out this strange thing of New York and Dubai. So I'm in, I'm trying to get to New York. And New York is five hours behind Edinburgh. Dubai is four hours ahead of Edinburgh. So changing to Edinburgh time. I'm on 0 to 45 on the 28th. Dubai is four hours ahead of Edinburgh. I need to take away four hours. Minus four hours. Well, that's going to knock me back again. That's fine. Doesn't matter. But 0245 minus four hours. So that becomes 0145, 0, 0, 45, 23, 22, 45. And that will now be the 27th. So now going to New York time. It says New York is five hours behind Edinburgh, so I need to take away five hours. So that gives me 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 17, 45, and I'm still on the 27th of November. And we're done there. SQA National 5 Apps, 2021, paper one, question nine, calculations with time. Jillian flew from Aberdeen to Caracas via Paris. She got on the aircraft at 0605. Well, let's take a note of that one then. And she was off the aircraft in Paris, one hour, 15 minutes. She got off the aircraft in Caracas at 3.30. Paris is one hour ahead. Caracas is five hours behind Paris. Calculate the total time she was on the aircraft, 15.30. But we're going to have to add in some time differences. So if we want to convert her time to Paris time, we need to add on those five hours. So I'll add five hours. But then if I want to go back to when she left, instead of having to mess about with her Aberdeen time, I can take away one hour for the Aberdeen being, Paris being behind Aberdeen. So add five hours, but take away one hour. In other words, add four hours. So I've turned this into Aberdeen time. And this is Aberdeen time, so it's, I'm, I'm dealing with the same thing. So... 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I get 19.30 as my finishing time. And my starting time was 6, 06, 05. Now, we can work out the difference between those two. So we're at 06, 05, we want to get to 19.30. So what's the easiest way to do this? Well, if I add 55 minutes, I get to 0700. I then need to add how many hours it is to 19. So 19 take away 7, in other words which is 12 hours, but then you've got the 30 minutes. So we're adding them together. In total, we have 12 hours, 30 minutes, 13 hours, 25 minutes. But we've got some extra information in the question, which says she got off the aircraft in Paris for one hour and 15 minutes. So I need to take away that one hour and 15 minutes to see how long she was on the aircrafts. So minus one hour and 15 minutes gives us a grand total of 12 hours and 10 minutes. And we're done there.
Next question answered by math, application maths 2019, paper one, question nine. After meeting in Beijing, Jennifer flies home to London via Amsterdam. The plane leaves Beijing on the 3rd of February 12.15. Let's take a note of that. Beijing, 3rd Feb at 12.15, local time. It then goes to Amsterdam and it arrives at Amsterdam on the 3rd of February as well. This time it's at 1800 local time. Now, it then says Beijing is seven hours ahead of Amsterdam. So if Beijing is seven hours ahead of Amsterdam, that means that Amsterdam's seven hours behind. So I need to add seven extra hours onto Amsterdam to get it into the same time frame as Beijing. So I need to add seven hours. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So 25, I'm going to the next day. So let's start that again. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 0, 1. So that is 0, 100 hours. And that will be on the 4th of February because it's the next day. So what's the difference between these two times now? So 12, 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Another 12 hours is 12, 15 plus the 45 minutes, it's 12 hours 45. And we're done there. On landing in Amsterdam, Jennifer's phone call, phone tells of the time and date in the following cities. Amsterdam, London and Miami. Jennifer plans to telephone her brother as soon as she gets home. She will arrive at her home in London at 23.15 local time. Her brother lives in Miami and arrives home from work at 1700 local time. Determine whether her brother will be home from work when Jennifer makes the call. So Jennifer's making the call at 21.15 local time. So we need to work out the difference in time between London, where she's calling from, and Miami, where she's calling to. So the difference in these two times. Well, that is 17.12, minus 5 hours. So when she makes a call at 23.15, it's minus five hours in Miami. So that's 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 15. Miami time. It says that he gets home from luck at 1700. Yes, he will be home. 18.15 is later than 17.00. And we're done there. Three National 5 Up Case to Maths 23, Paper 2, Question 3. Fiona's having a back garden redesign. A new fence is to put up from A to B and from B to C. Rolls of fence are three metres long, cost £22 per roll. Calculate the cost of the fencing. So, A to B is here and here, so we ought to have that length, that's 21 metres. So let's just write that down, A to B equals 21 metres. And it wants us to go from B to C, which is from here to here. You'll notice you've got two right angled triangles, so I can do Pythagoras twice, essentially. If I do Pythagoras here, that'll give me this length. And then Pythagoras with these two to get this length. So for clarity, let's call that one and two. So Pythagoras on one, let's call this little length here just x for the sake of it. Five squared plus seven squared is equal to x squared. Five squared plus seven squared is a calculator job. 74. So, so x squared is equal to 74. Now you could just leave that as x squared because you're going to actually square it again when you do the 21 squared before you square root. But I'm assuming a lot of you are going to square root here. So I'm going to find x as the square root of 74, which is equal to 8.60 to 3. But you could have just left it as a group of 74 for the x squared because now what we're going to do is Pythagoras on 
shape two. So for shape two, just being very careful, this is the hypotenuse across opposite right angles, also hypotenuse. So if I call this side, say, let's call it y, then this squared and this squared I have to take away because I've already got the longest side. So that means that y squared equals 21 squared minus the answer we just got squared. So that equals, getting a calculator, 21 squared minus this answer squared, which is 74, because it's the square root of 74 we had, or just put it in again, is equal to 367. So y is the square root of 367, 19.157 or 19.16. I'll just put that as 19.16. And that's meters. So now we've got both our lengths. We've got 21 from A to B and 19.16 from B to C. So total length. Twenty-one plus nineteen point one six is forty point one six. Now it also tells us some information in the question. It tells us that rows of fencing are three meters long and cost twenty-two pound per row. So I now need to work out well how many rows I need to buy. So number of rows is equal to our answer of forty point one six divided by 3 because of 3 metres long. So taking that in our calculator, we get 13.38 with a bunch of other numbers. But that means we need to buy 14 because otherwise we'll be short. So we're buying 14 rolls. And then the last bit, they cost £22 per roll. So the cost is equal to 14 times 22. And we get £308. And we're done there. A flag is in the shape of an isosceles triangle with a rectangle on top. Calculate the area. Well, you should know the area of a triangle is half the base times the height. So if I cut this here, I need to know the height of my triangle. So we're going to have to use Pythagoras because we know two sides. So if we call this x, x squared is 13 squared minus 5 squared, that's 169 minus 25, which is 144. So x must be the square root of 144, which is 12 centimetres. So our triangle area, half the base, the base is 10, times the height of 12, that's 5 times 12, which is 60 square centimetres. And then for the rectangle, that's just length times breadth, 10 times 4, which is 40 square centimetres. So the total area is 100 square centimetres. It's been answered by Rapp, Case of Maths 2021, paper 2, question 2. A property developer has a garden plans for the new housing project. The fence is at a right angle to the house. Not so mentioned as a right angle, it might be Pythagoras. The wall is at a right angle to the house in the shed. Fence panels are sold in two metre sections for 2140 to calculate the minimum cost of the fencing. So we're buying fence panels, we're working at a length. So this is perimeter, and perimeter is sometimes mixed with Pythagoras. So let's have a look at this question. We want the fence panels, which is this colour. So we want this length. And this length. So that's a diagonal, so I need to use Pythagoras. So I'll make a right angle triangle to do that. So we want to know this length along here. Well, big length is 10, small length is 6, 10 take away 6 is 4. So that's 4 meters. And going up the way, big length is 4, small length is 2, 4 take away 2 is 2. So we get 2 meters here. And now we can use Pythagoras. So for part A, 4 squared plus 2 squared is my first starting point. So I get my calculator out if I need to. 4 squared plus 2 squared is 20. Let's take a note of that. So that means that our length is the square root of 20. Because we square root when we do Pythagoras. And that gives me 
4.47 meters. So the total fence is 4.47 plus the 6 meters going along, which is 10.47 meters. Now let's read the next bit of the question. Fence panels are sold in 2 meter sections, costing 2140. Calculate the minimum cost of the fencing. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 would give me 5. But I need to have a little bit extra, so I'm going to have to add an extra one. So I'm going to have to buy six sections. So six sections times the cost of 2140 is 128.4. So I write 128 pound and 40 pence. And we're done there. It's two right angled triangles, as shown in the diagram. Calculate the total length of cable needed for this section of the bridge. So, I need to work out this length cable, and I need to work out add on that one. Now, to get this one, I need a right angle triangle to do Pythagoras, but I'm going to need the height. I don't have it, but I can use this triangle first. So, let's call this bit A. Then A squared equals 300 squared minus 295 squared, because Pythagoras, opposite of right angle, is the longest side, so when I've got the longest side, I take away. That gives me 2975. Well, 2975 is 54.54. So that means A equals 54.54. That's our height. And that's in meters. So now we've got the other triangle, which is on the left. And that is 54.54, and that is 600. So if we call this one C, then 54.54 squared plus 600 squared equals C squared. So this is now an added by Pythagoras because I'm finding the longest side. We already know that that squared is 2975 plus 600 squared gives me 362. 975, so C is the square root of that number, and that is 602.474. So now total length of the table is just that 602.474. So we do 602.474 plus the 300, 902.474, let's just call it 47 to two decimal places and be done there. Next week, National Five Applications to Maths, Structure 23, Paper 1, Question 9. The design of a skate park ramp is shown. The height is 70 centimetres. To be suitable, the ramp must have a gradient of 0 0.35 plus or minus 0 0.01. Determine whether the ramp is suitable. So you work out the gradient. The gradient is vertical over horizontal. A vertical is 70 centimetres, but our horizontal is 2.1 metres. So we're going to have to make it all the same units. So I'll keep it all in centimetres to have bigger numbers. That's 70 over 210 centimetres. So simplifying that, that gives me 7 out of 21. And simplify that again, because 7 was out of 21 three times, that's a third. Change a third to a decimal, which you maybe already know a third is 0 0.333, but if you don't, you can quickly do a wee sum. 1 divided by 3. 3 doesn't go into 1, so add some zeros. 3 threes are 9. Add 1. 3 threes are 9. Add 1. You should be able to see that it just goes 0 0.333 forever. And now it says the term for that is suitable. So we've got this tolerance here. So our max, it can be is 0 0.35 plus 0 0.01, which is 0 0.3. Six and our min is equal to zero point three five minus zero point zero one, which is zero point three four. So the ramp has to have a green a between zero point three four and zero point three six. 
So is it suitable? Not suitable because 0 0.33 is less than the min of 0 0.34. And we're done there. Three dating percentages, SQA National 5 apps, 2021 people on question 13. John has a slope in his back garden. The slope is the height of eight planks. Each plank is 22.5 centimetres. There's 960 centimetres away from the bottom of the slope. Calculate the gradient. So the gradient, remember, is the vertical over the horizontal. So for part A, gradient equals vertical over horizontal. So I need to know my vertical, where it's 22.5, and it says there's eight of them. So I need to times that by eight. So eight fives is 40, carry four. Eight twos is 16 plus, eight twos is 16 plus four is 20. Eight twos is 16, 17, 18. So I get 180. So we get 180 over 960. Always simplify your answers. So I can do 18 over 96 divided by 10, divide by 3 then, 3 6s is 18, 3 3s are 9, 3 2s are 6, divide by 2, we get 3 over 16 as our gradient. Part B says his neighbour Helen also has a slope, the gradient of her slope is 20%. She thinks her slope is sleeper than John's. Is she correct? We need to compare 20% with 3 sixteenths. So there's a number of ways to compare things. If you're comparing fractions, if the numerators are the same, that allows you to look at the denominators, or you can change them both to the same thing, like percentages or decimals. In this case, I'm going to make them all fractions, actually. So 20% is 20 out of 100. That is a fifth. But remember, I'm comparing with 3 sixteenths. So if I times this one by 3 on the top and bottom, I'll get 3 fifteenths. That's our comparison. Now the top's the same, so all I need to do is look at the bottom. Out of 16 is smaller than out of 15. So 3 sixteenths is less than 3 fifteenths, which remember is 20%. So she thinks she's steeper. Is she correct? Yes, she is correct. The other ways you could have done this question is change. 3 sixteenths to a decimal and change 20% to a decimal and compare it that way. Let's do a national five up case of maths 2018, paper one, question 15. A lamp to allow wheelchair access to a school has the dimensions shown below. So it's 25 centimetres high and 4 metres long. The maximum gradient allowed for the lamp with a, for the horizontal distance of 4 metres is 1 and 14, 1 14. Does this gradient meet the requirements? So gradient. Gradient, start with the exam paper tells you that gradient is vertical distance over horizontal. So gradient is vertical over horizontal, B over H, I'll just write. But we need the units to be the same, and they're not at the moment. So I've got 25 centimetres and 4 metres. So it'll be easier just to turn that into 400 centimetres, 4 times 100, because it's 100 centimetres in a metre. So that means I've got vertical, 25, out of horizontal, 400. And I'm checking, is that... Compare it to 1 and 14, so I need to simplify that as best I can and see if I can compare them. So 25 goes into 400, just counting 25, 25, 50, 75, 100, you get 4 and 100, so that's 4, 8, 12, 16 and 400, so that's 116. So the question becomes, is 116 bigger or smaller than 114? Well, it's smaller because the top number is the same, so we can compare them. 16 is bigger than 14, which means 116 is less than 1 14th. We would rather 1 14th of a pizza than 1 16th. 1 16th is less than 1 14th. And therefore, the maximum gradient allowed is 1 14th. Yes, the slope meets the requirements. And we're done there. Next grade, National 5 Applications of Maths 2023, Paper 2, Question 4. A reception area in a hotel features a large mirror. The mirror is in the shape of a square with four identical semicircles on each side. 
the square has length 1.2 meters. I notice I've not put that on the diagram, so let's do let's just draw our square with the side, we'll just put 1.2 meters for the sake of clarity for ourselves. And then the semicircles have a diameter of 0 0.7. So on this diagram, I will just note that this length here is equal to 0 0.7 meters. It now says part A, find the area of the mirror. So we need the area of the square, add the area of all the circular parts. So the area of the square is just 1.2 squared or 1.2 times 1.2, length times breadth. 1.2 squared is 1.44 meters squared. And then for our semicircle, Now I'm going to do this in one go here. I've got four times semicircles, so four lots of a semicircle is half a circle, so it's a half. And for my start of exam paper, pi r squared for a circle times pi times r squared. So I need to identify my r. Well, r is equal to 0 0.7 divided by 2. Use a calculator if you have to, but you get 0 0.35 meters. So now I can do my sum. 4 times a half times pi times 0 0.35 squared. 4 because there's 4 of them, a half because a half circles, 0 0.35 because it's the radius. 4 times a half, which is 0 0.5, times pi, times 0 0.35 squared. I get 0 0.7696, blah, blah, blah. I'll just leave that in the calculator. So our total area is equal to the 1.44 plus the 0 0.76969. So getting my calculator back out, I'll just leave that in and then add 1.44. So I'll press equals, add 1.44. I get 2.20969, 2 2.20. 2 Nine six nine. Again, it doesn't ask us to round, so we could get away with not rounding, just put our units in, meters squared, or I'm just going to round it for the sake of clarity. That's about 2.21 meters squared. And we're done. There. Part B, calculate the area of the grass. So let's have a look at this question. We've got this shape here, which is the grass. So we can split this up into a triangle like we've already done, and then add in two rectangles. Or, prefer, or you could do a whole big rectangle minus a triangle, whatever way you prefer. I'm going to do it by adding because most people I think would do that. So I'm going to split it up, going down one triangle there, one rectangle here, and then another big rectangle here. So let's draw that out underneath. Our triangle is 4 by 2 already. Our rectangle below that which looks like this, is 2 by, now that's 6, so that means that all the way along is 10, so that's 4. 2 by 4, we've already got the numbers, 2 by 4. And then our big rectangle, at the side, the whole height is 4, and then the whole length of it is 6, so it's 4 by 6. So that means our area is just the triangle, which is a half, of 4 times 2, so that's a triangle, plus 2 times 4 because that's one rectangle, plus 6 times 4 because that's the other one. Do the sum separately if you want. Half of 4 times 2, well 4 twos is 8, so that is 4, plus 2 fours is 8, plus 6 fours is 24, but remember this was a calculator question, so you just use calculator anytime you want, and you get 36 meters squared, and we're done there. Hey, screen, I'm five up to some math 19, paper two, question 10. A sports ground is the shape of a rectangle and two semicircles are shown. A uh, running track is shaded in the diagram. Calculate the area of the running track. So if we look at this one here, this, we could do the area of the whole thing minus the area of the whole. Or what we could do instead is just do our circle part minus this circle and then just add on the two rectangles. And that's the approach I'm going to take here. So let's look at our circles. We've got one semicircle on this side and one on that side. So in total, we've got two whole circles, a big circle and a small circle. So I'll do the big one minus the small one. 
Form the start of exam paper, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So I'm going to need the radius. So let's get a calculator and work out the, area, the radius of the big one. So the radius of this one is going to be half of that. 90.7 divided by 2 is 45.35. And then for the middle bit, I've got 73.6 divided by 2, which is 36.8. So in this bit, I could write 36.8. Meters for both of them. So then it's just the area of the big circle minus the area of the small circle. So that's pi times 45.35 squared minus pi times 36.8 squared. Now, we could do these some separately and then get our answer, or we can just do brackets around them both. So I'm just going to do brackets just to quicken this up. So get in my calculator, bracket, pi times 45.35 squared, close my bracket, minus bracket, pi times 36.8 squared, close the bracket, press equals, and you get 2206.599. 2206.599. Meters squared, so that's my circular bit done. So now I need to do my rectangles. So for my rectangles, I've got this length times this length, and I've got two of these rectangles. So I need to identify the length and the height. So to get the height, you've got all the way up minus this bit, but then I need to divide by two because there's two sides of this. So 90.7. Minus 73.6 divided by 2 is the height of each rectangle. And that gives me 8.55. So now for my rectangle, I've got 8.55 here. And I've got 84.4 here. So the area of that is 84.4 times 8.55, but I've got two of them, so times two. 1443.24. So I've now got two areas. I've got the area of the circular parts. I've already took away the holes, and I've got the area of the grey rectangles, so I can just add them together to get my final area. So total equals 2206.5997 plus 1443.24. That gives me 3649.839 or 3649.84 would be fine. 3649.84 meters squared. And there's our final answer there. It's great answer by that because the maths for 18, paper 1, question 13. A lawn is to, create, to be created in the shape of an isosceles triangle with the dimensions shown. Calculate the area. So the area of a triangle is a half the base times the height, but we have not got the height. But it is isosceles, so if I do that, I'll cut it in half here, which means I can work out the height with Pythagoras. So it's a Pythagoras question. So let me just draw that in. Cutting that here. So that means that this is 6 metres, and we've got 10 metres. So showing you that on a normal triangle outside here, we have got 6, and we've got 10, and we're working out this side here. Let's call it x. Pythagoras says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that's when you're finding the long side, that's a and b, and that would be usually c. But I'm finding the short side here, so that means that I take away. So that means that x squared, because I've called it x, we can call it a or b if you want, equals 10 squared minus 6 squared. That's 100 minus 36, which is 64. Square root the answer, so x is square root 64, which is 8 metres. So I now know the height is 8 metres. Area is half the base times the height. The base is 12 and the height is 8. So that's a half times 12 times 8. Half of 12 is 6. 
So I do 6 times 8, 48 metres squared. You square units for area, and we're done there. Screen National 5 application of mass truck 23 paper 2 question 2. A glazier is edging the perimeter of a window. The window is in the shape of two rectangles and two identical quarter circles. Calculate the length of edging required for the perimeter. So perimeter is all the way around the outside, so I'm going to have to go 100 plus 2300 plus another 100. But then it's this arc length here. So you will recall from the start of the exam paper that the circumference of a circle is pi times the diameter. And we have got two quarters of a circle, so we work out a quarter and then just double our answer. So for a quarter circle, we have one quarter times pi times the diameter. Now be very careful here. This is the radius, so the diameter is double this, which is 1,400. Get a calculator out and work that out, but then double it. 1 quarter times pi times 1,400, which is 1,099.557. So for both quarters, That's 2 times 1099.557. I'll just leave it in my calculator and times by 2. I get 2199.115148. I'll just put dot 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 rather than rounding. So there we go, we've done our circles. So our perimeter is just going to be equal to the answer we just got 2199.1148 plus, and then we've got 1,000, 2,300, another 1,000, so I'll just write that as I go, 1,000, 2,300, plus another 1,000, plus, now let's be careful with this, I missed it almost, notice this, this goes down, along, up, curves, curves, there you've got this bit in the middle, so how big is this bit in the middle, let's just work that out. Well, I've got 700 to here and 700 to here. We know that's 1,400. So this bit in the middle is 2,300 minus 1,400. If you need, you can use your calculator at any time, but that is 900. So that extra bit is 900. So we need to add on 900 as well. 2199.1148. No need to round. I'm going to round it in anyway. Plus 1,000. Can't really see that. Plus... 2,300 plus, I think it's another 1,000, plus a 900. That gives me a grand total of 7,399.1148. Put my dot dot dots in because remember I didn't round. But if you did want to round, it doesn't ask you to round. A couple of significant figures would be appropriate. So about, I can put that as... 7,400 millimetres, I think, would be fine. But any reasonable grounding would be okay. SQA National 5 Applications of Maths 2019, Paper 2, Question 5. A hotel is having a swimming pool built. It is in the shape of a rectangle and two quarter circles as shown below. The swimming pool will have a safety rail fitted around the edge. Around the edge is perimeter. There will be two 125cm wide gaps to allow access to the pool. The safety rail is sold in 3 metre lengths. Each 3 metre length costs 11 49 Calculate the minimum cost for the safety rail of the pool. So I'm going to have to work out the perimeter, but then leave a gap of 2 times 125. So perimeter of semicircles, well, we can do the circumference of a semicircle because we get a circumference of a circle in the exam paper. Circumference of a circle from the exam paper is pi times diameter. I've got two, semi, two quarter circles, so that's one semicircle. So that's, so for my circumference part, it's a half times pi times the diameter. Now I need to calculate the diameter. This tells me from here to here is 10, but that's a radius. So the diameter is 20. So the circumference part is 0 0.5 times pi 
times 20, which is 31.4159. So we've done the, this bit and we've done this bit. So now we need to add on the straight bits. Well, we know that this is 36.5, so so is this bit. So I can add two 36.5s, so let's just take a note of that. Plus 36.5 plus 36.5, I'll just call this a perimeter. And then I need to add on these two bits here, but since this is a circle, they are a radius, so that's just 10. So another 10 and 10 here. So that's 10 plus 10. So in total, I have got 31.4159 plus 36.5 plus 36.5 plus 10 plus 10. 124.4159 meters. But it then says, there'll be two 120 centimetre, centimetre gaps. So take away the gaps. Now you can't take away one, two, fives because that is centimetres. So I change that to metres, which is 1.25 divided by 100. So I'm doing 124.4159 minus 1.25 minus another one because there's two gaps. One two one point nine two to two decimal places. So now we know the whole length we need, and we move on to the next prep bit, working out the cost. So it says the safety rail was sold in three meter lengths. Each meter three meter length costs eleven forty nine. So I need to work out how many bits of safety rail. So number of safety rail. That's just going to be 121.92 divided by 3 because I sold in 3 metre lengths. So 121.92 divided by 3 equals 40.64. So you're going to have to buy extra because you can't buy 0.64. So you need to buy 41. Then the last bit, each 3 metre length costs 11.49. So I need to do for, for the cost 11.49 times 41 and that gives me 471 pound and nine pence and we're done there. Next week that's about that piece of maths 2018 people on question 11. Ribbon has to be placed around the outside of a love heart cake shown below. The top of the cake is in shape of a sausage triangle with two identical semicircles. The ribbon needs to be the length of the perimeter of the top of the cake plus an extra 2.8 centimetres. Calculate the length of the ribbon for the cake. So, start of the exam paper tells us the circumference and area of a circle. So we need circumference because it's perimeter. Circumference is pi times diameter. So let's have a look and see what we've got here. We have got a semicircle and another identical semicircle. So really we've got a full circle here. So we can do the full circle, and then we've got this length and this length we need to add on. So let's check, that's 34 as well, because that's symmetrical. And our diameter, well, let's have a look. All the way along here is the diameter, which is half of 40, so the diameter is 20 centimetres. So let's do our circumference part. C equals pi, which is 3.14 times 20. So times by a multiple of 10. So times by 10 first, that's 31.4. And then double the answer. Two fours is eight. Two ones is two. Two threes is six. So we get 62.8 centimetres. So then we just need to add everything together. 62.8. Now don't be tempted to do another one of them, but as a whole, because that's half. I've done a whole one, so that's both of them. Plus 34, plus 34, plus the extra 2.8. So that's 8 plus 8 is 16, carry 1. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, carry 1. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 133.6 centimetres. 
看我长得呀。Lorna also purchased the paperweight as a gift. The paperweight is in the shape of a cube with a hemisphere on top. A hemisphere is half a sphere, of course, with a diameter of six centimeters. Calculate the volume of the paperweight. Start of exam paper does tell us that a, a sphere was four thirds pi r cubed. It does not tell us a cube, we're just a, we're, or a cuboid, so you need to know that yourself, okay? So let's take a note of a sphere, well, we'll call it a hemisphere. That's going to be a half times four thirds pi r cubed. Make sure you write that down right. The number of people I see writing three quarters is ridiculous. It's four thirds, but it's cubed, not squared, okay? Right. Okay, next bit. That's our hemisphere, and then we've got our cube. Is it a cube or a cuboid? Cube. So our cube, each side is the same, and you're just doing length times breadth times height. So for our cube, length times breadth times height. So let's do each one separately. Our cube is 6 times 6 times 6. I think that's 216, but that's only because I memorize cube numbers. Let's actually put it in the calculator. 216, yep. A centimeters cube. And let's now do our hemisphere. So our radius we need to find first. Clearly the, the diameter is 6, so the radius is half, which is 3. Always watch, we're not trying to trick you, which we were. So it's a half times 4 thirds times pi times 3 cubed. Why do we do that in a calculator? Well, let's see. A few ways to do fractions in a calculator. You can actually use a fraction button if you know that. I've got a thing you don't. Or you can just divide, right? 1 half is 1 divided by 2. So I can just put brackets, 1 divided by 2, times brackets, 4 divided by 3, times my pi, times my 3 cubed, so a power button, and then a 3, press equals, and I'll just give you the answer, 56.54866. 56.54866, blah, 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 blah. So our total volume, is equal to our answer 56.548 dot 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 plus 216. Notice I'm not rounding there because I just can't be bothered. We'll round at the end, right? You should always round at the end anyway. So there's your answer. I plus the 216. I get 272.548. Not sure what your teachers told you about rounding, but technically you should never be any more accurate than the accuracy of the actual question, the measurements in the question, which was only one anyway to one significant figure. So really you could uh, you could write your answer as 300 and you should be fine, I wouldn't do it, right? But let's just make it 272.5 and that seems reasonable to me because it's not given us any real rounding to do for this question. It's going to be five application maths, 2021, paper two, question seven. Doug is organising a birthday party for his son and there'll be 13 children at the party. He's going to give them juice and cups that are in a cylinder and these are 11 high by 3.5 radius. Each cup will be filled with juice, two centimetres from the top. He'll give each child two cups and he'll buy juice and bottles which each have 1.75 litres. Calculate the number of bottles he needs to buy. So we need to work out the volume of the cylinder, but without two centimetres from the top, so our height that we're going to use is 11 minus 2, which is 9 centimetres. So the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times h. So that's pi times 3.5 squared times 9. That gives me 346.36. Three four six point three six centimeters cubed. So that's for one cup. So the volume in total that it needs is three four six point three six times two cups per child and thirteen children. So we just times my answer by two and thirteen you get 9,005.375 centimetres cubed. Now, we have got litres for our bottles. So, you should know that one centimetre cubed is one millilitre. 
So that means that I've got 9,005 millilitres divided by 1,000, because 1,000 millilitres in a litre. So you get 9.005375 litres. You can do that sum in a calculator if you want. 9.005.375 divided by 1,000, 9.005. 375. So now he buys, buys the bottles of 1.75 litre bottles. So I don't even know how many bottles. So number of bottles 9.005 divided by 1.75. That will not be an exact answer. So I'll take my answer, my calculator, and divide by 1.75. You get 5.145 and a bunch of numbers. 5.145 bottles, you can't buy that, so I'm going to have to buy an extra bottle, so six bottles, and we're done there. Next screen, that's the five application maths 2019, paper two, question two. The bottle consists of a cuboid and a cylinder. The dimensions are shown in the diagram, calculate the volume. So we've got a volume question here. We need to be able to calculate the cuboid ourselves without any work, but for a cylinder, we can check the start of the exam paper. So volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, and for a cube it's just length times breadth times height, or cuboid, sorry, length times breadth times height. So we need to work out those two separately, we add them together. So let's check that we have everything we need. For a cuboid, we've got 10, 8 length, 4.5 breadth for going in the way and 10 high. So we're times an M together. And for our cylinder, it's pi times. Now we need to work out what R is. Well, we know the diameter is 3. So R is half the diameter. So R is 1.5. So 1.5 squared. And then times by the height of the cylinder, which is 4. So let's work out our two sums separately. So volume cylinder. Pi times 1.5 squared times 4 is 28.274. Not going to round too much, but that will do there. And then the volume of a cuboid, 8 times 4.5 times 10 is 360. So our total volume. Writing down our sums, 28.274 plus 360, but using a calculator to work that out. I get 388.271 centimetres cubed for the units. You could round it if you want, but it's not asking you to. But 388.27 or 388.3 centimetres cubed would be fine as well. And we're done there. There's a prism with dimensions shown, calculate the volume of the pool in litres. So if I want to know the volume of the pool, there's two ways I could do this. I could split it up into two shapes in volume and calculate the volume separately, but I think it's easy to just do it by area. So if I draw a line from here all the way along to here, I'll have a rectangle, and then I'll have a little triangle. So let me draw that out for you. I've got the rectangle first. Dimensions of that are 0 0.5 on this side, and the whole length is 16. And then I've got this triangle. Now you need to be careful with this bit. It is a right angle triangle. Its height is 2. But is it? Because that's an immediate thing you, sh you would think to do because you think you look at it and go, oh, I see 2. So I write 2. But look, I've cut it here. So there's this little bit that I need to take off, 0 0.5. So watch out for that. I actually need to do 2 minus 0 0.5, which is 1.5. Similarly, going a longer way, I'm not going all the way along. I'm stopping here, which is 4 short. So it's 16 minus 4, which is 12. And now I can do the area of both bits. And once I do that, I'll know the area of the whole front bit here. And to get the volume of a prism, it just times by the depth. So let's do our area. 16 times 0 0.5 plus a half of 12 times 1.5. Because the area of a triangle is half the base times the height. So 16 times 0 0.5 is 8 plus a half, which is 0 0.5, times 12 
times, and it was 1.5 height, not 2, which is 9. 8 plus 9 is 17 square metres. Then we know our depth is going in this way, which is the same as this one, so it's 8. So our volume is 17 by 8, which is 136 metres cubed. But that's not litres. So there's a few conversions you need to know for National 5 apps. You need to know that one centimetre cubed is one millilitre. And it's worth knowing, but you can work this out yourself, that one metre cubed is a thousand litres. Now, how could you get there yourself, you're wondering? Well, one centimetre cubed is one millilitre. So that means that a hundred centimetre cubed equals a hundred millilitres. So how, what about one metre cubed? Well, that is hundred times a hundred times a hundred. Because it's a hundred by a hundred by a hundred centimetres. So that would give you a hundred times a hundred times a hundred millilitres, and then just divide by a thousand to get in litres. Although it's just much quicker and easier, if you ask me, to remember that one metre cubed is a thousand litres, because it comes up more often than not. So I'm just going to use that. One, three, six times a thousand. 136,000 litres. And we're done there. Club set up a course at the event. Participants leave the start point and run on a bearing of 55 degrees for 140 meters to A. They then run on a bearing of 170A for 252 to B. Construct a scale drawing to illustrate this route and it says use the scale 1 centimeters 40 meters. So we know that for now and we'll work out our angles first. So we need a protractor for this. Okay. So I've got a protractor set up and it says we leave the start point and run a bearing of 055 degrees. So if I go back down here, I've set up the north line and you have a protractor going up through the north line, going to the right. And I make sure that that line goes through the zero, so it's the outside scale. And I measure around 55 degrees, which is around to here. So I put a little mark there at 55. So it says 140 metres, but one centimetre is 40 metres. So I need to do 140 divided by 40 to see how many centimetres I need. So that's 3.5 centimetres. So I'm going to bring my ruler in, join it up through the dot from the centre and draw 3.5 centimetres. With my ruler lined up as best I can on an iPad, it'll be much easier for you. Forget about the angle on the ruler, that's just the thing on the ruler on this. So I've got, I'm at zero and I want to draw 3.5, so up to here, that looks good. Get rid of his ruler, get rid of that extra mark, and there we are. So, so now we've got to here, so we need a new north point. So we draw another north line in using the ruler, and then we check the next bit of the information. 170 degrees to flag B. Once again, I bring my protractor and line it up completely. This doesn't go past 180, so I'm good. So I just measure down to 170, which is here, and put a little mark on the zero down to 170. And then I take my protractor away and join it up with a ruler. So now for this bit, it says 252 meters. So again, I do 252 up here, divide by 40 to see how much I need to draw. That is 6.3, so 6.3 centimeters. So I've lined up my ruler as best I can. Obviously, it'll be much easier for you with pen and paper. I have to go to 6.3. So I can see here that I've got 6.123 down there. So being very accurate as I possibly can. 1, 2, 3. And joining it up. And I'll take away that ruler. If we continue this question, it says, if people then return to the start point, use the still drawing to determine the bearing and distance from the start point to flag B, from flag B. So there's our drawing. So all I need to do is get a ruler and join up the point. So to work out the distance, I get my ruler to measure the distance, being as accurate as I can. I get 4.4, 4.3 or 4.4. So 4.4 I'll use, and it's 40 meter, 40 meters. 4.4 times 40 is 176 meters. 
not kilometers. Don't know why I got kilometers on my diagram, but I'm not going to change it now. Let me just change it here. There you go. Meters and meters. Okay. And I need the bearing. So form B, form B, we'll draw an off line. Use a ruler for that. And I want to go all the way around to the start. So if you watch my trace here, I'm going all the way around to here. So I actually need to extend my north line underneath because it's past 180. When it does go past 180, you get your protractor and extend your north line if you've not got a protractor that goes all the way around, which a lot of yours won't. And you go down through that line from the middle, making sure it's all lined up. And you measure around on the inside scale this time. No, it's not the outside scale actually. So it's going to here. So let me just count that by zooming in. We've got 130, 135, 36, 37, 38. 138, I take that as. So let's go back to the question. So it's 138 degrees, but plus the 180. Which gives us a bearing of 318 degrees. So 176 meters. On a bearing of three and five up because the maths 2019 paper one question eight sales driveway is sloped as shown cross section driveway is in shape of a right angle triangle the base is four meters long and makes an angle of 12 degrees as shown construct a scale drawing of the cross section of the driveway so a scale drawing needs a ruler and a protractor uh, four meters but it says use a scale of one centimeter 0 0.5 meters so 0 0.5 1 1.5 2 2.5 and so on makes an eight centimeter drawing i need plus a 12 degree angle so I'll just take a note of that. I need to draw eight centimeters and 12 degrees. So let's get a ruler first of all. So here's my ruler. Now your ruler starts at zero and you go along to eight, sure you're accurate. Let's get a zero there. And we draw a nice eight centimeter line. Get as close as we possibly can to that end. And there we are, eight centimeters. Let's get rid of that ruler. Now we need a protractor to draw the 12 degree angle. So I've already got a picture of a protractor here I can use. So going to the end of my line, making sure the middle lines up. It's going through the zero. So there's my protractor. <clears throat> now notice when I'm using my protractor here that it's going through the middle zero. So this is me going up here. And I want 12 degrees. So I've got 10 degrees and then an extra one, two. So putting that in 10, 11, 12, there's 12 degrees there. So I make a little mark with my pencil and get rid of my protractor. So line my ruler up through the mark in the end of my line. I just draw a nice big straight line, even go past if I have to. And then we're going to join up the end vertically up here. Now I can get vertically with my protract my ruler just by turning it around. But we'll make sure we're joined up, get it nice and neat, and there we get our straight line. And you can obviously then delete any of the extra lines that you don't need. But essentially there is our scale drawn. We can mark on that's 12 degrees, and that that would be eight centimeters, which is equal to four meters. And we've got our right angle here. But B says use a scale drawing to calculate the gradient. So gradient, remember from the start of exam paper, is vertical over horizontal. So I need to get my ruler again and measure the vertical length. So I need to measure the length of my line. So making sure that that's vertical. I've got it on the zero. 1.5, 1.6, about 1.7 centimetres there. 1.7 centimetres, obviously much easier to do on a bit of paper rather than using aerotoid tools, but that means that our gradient is 1.7 over 4. Sorry, 1.7 over 8. Which, we just can't leave it as a 1.7 over 8, so times both by 10 to get 17 over 80. The gradient so it's 17 over 80 and we're done there. Let's be a dash five up case of maths for 18 people on question 12. 
A helicopter flew from Aberdeen Airport to transport workers to an oil rig one and then continued on oil rig two. It flew 82 kilometres on a bearing of 42 degrees to oil rig one and then it flew 46 kilometres on a bearing of 194 to oil rig two. Construct a scale drawing to illustrate this journey. Use the scale one centimetres is 10 kilometres. So scale drawn. I need my north lines and I need to draw my bearings in. So the first bearing, it falls 82 kilometres and 42 degrees. So I've run the protractor for this. Luckily, I've already got one ready. So let's put that. Remember, we put it against our north line, so I need to rotate it round. And we'll zoom in, don't worry. So there we are. It's against my north line. I put snap back into the corner and it's 42 degrees I need to measure. So I'm going to go round. 40 and then an extra two so that's going to be about here there so then you would move your protractor away and you would draw the line in so drawing that up to that dot there we go now we need to get our length correct on this so it says get rid of this ruler 84, 82 kilometers, and we have to use the scale one centimeter is 10 kilometers. So 82 divided by 10 is 8.2 centimeters. So I get my ruler again and make sure I draw that line in nice and accurately. Line that up 8.2 the best of my ability. And there we are. So we've done that, that's 8.2 centimetres. Next bit of information. It then flew 46 kilometres on a bearing of 194. So we need a new north line. Now I can do that on the iPad quite easily, but use a ruler. And we're going 194 degrees. Now, you'll notice if you're using a normal protractor, it only goes to 180. If you've got one of those 360 degrees to protractors, this is easier. But if not, if you've got one of these, then the first thing you do is you do 194 minus 180, which equals 14. And then you just measure 14 to the other side by making your north line go down the other way as well. So if I just extend that north line, so we get a protractor, we bring it in. Up in the middle, we will measure our angle. But this time we can now see, try and line this up better. We'll go right through the middle. We want to go around 14s. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, so we're about here. So we move, move the track straight and join it up. I'll put my ruler along my mark. I need to check how long it is. It is 46 degree kilometers, so that's 4.6 centimeters. So I'll just measure that up with my ruler. So 4.5, 4.6. So there's my zero, 4.5, 4.6, being as accurate as I possibly can. You'll notice my ruler goes up both directions, yours won't obviously, it's just because it's on an iPad. So that's my zero there, and that's me at 4.6 now. So I've done that, and that's my 4.6. Put my angles in, so I had 42 degrees for the first one, so that's zero 42. And then this whole angle from here all the way around to there is my bearing of 194 degrees. Remember the way I measured that was that we went 180 plus the extra 14. So now we have done that journey. So that is rig one, call it, and that's rig two. And there we are. Part B, use your steel joint to determine the distance and bearing of the airport from oil rig two. So there's my airport there, and there's oil rig two. So I need to get my ruler and measure that distance. 4.8 or 4.9 centimeters. So let's just call it, I'm gonna go 4.8 if I could this one. So I know that that's 4.8 centimeters. So for part B, 4.8 times 10 equals 48 kilometers. And the bearing, we need to measure the angle. So we get our protractor again. So now we need the bearing of the airport from oil rig two. So there's oil rig two there. So we're starting from there. So we need a north line at that one. So 
again, use your ruler to do this, but I can do it on the iPad quite easily. Just put the north line straight up. So there's my north line. I'm going to need my protractor again. You should be able to see that I'm going to have to go all the way around to there. So I'm going to have to measure the left hand side. So I'll have my north line extend. And then we'll use the protractor and we'll move it in position, turning it around, making it a bit smaller, putting it in its place as best we possibly can. And you should be able to see here that if I zoom in even further, we're going down from zero all the way to 80. 81, 2, 3, 4, about 85, 6, 7, 8, 9, yep, 85 is in there. So 85 degrees, but we've got the 180 to go first. So that means that it is 180, the bearing is 180 plus 85, which is 265 degrees. Obviously, if you had a 360 degree protractor, you could have just measured all the way around in one go. National 5 Applications of Mass 2023, Paper 1, Question 2. A lorry speedometer is shown. The lorry speedometer is restricted to a maximum of 56 miles per hour. Use the speedometer to calculate this speed in kilometres per hour. <coughs> okay, so let's have a look at this. Miles per hour is on the outside. Kilometres per hour is on the inside. So I need to find 56. Well, let's see if it's going up. Always check if it's going up in ones or not. So it goes up in ones on here. But on the inside, you should be able to see it goes 0, then 20, and there's only 10 in between. So it's actually going up in twos. There's 10 in the middle. So be very careful there. Now let's try and find 56. So we'll zoom this right in. Miles per hour, 55, 56. So there's my 56 here. Taking that straight across, you could have used a ruler for this, but I will. I can do it quite like that. It's going to be right there. So I just need to count the kilometers per hour. Remember, this is going up in twos. So it's 82, 84, 86, 88, 90. So we get 90 kilometers per hour. Usually a mark for marking it on the diagram and then just for reading it off. Okay, question one was about Stephen blowing up his tires and you're given this diagram. And in order to be safe, the tires should be blown up to a pressure between 35 and 45 psi. It blew them up to 230 kPa. Is this at a safe pressure? Pressure. So let's find 230 on this diagram. Well, that's here. So lining that up to here is where it is on PSA. PSI, sorry. And that's 30, 1, 2, 3. 33 PSI. It has to be between 35 and 45. No. He blew them up to... 33 PSI, which is below the minimum safe pressure of 35 PSI. Done. Jillian thinks that 24 degrees F is colder than minus 3 degrees C. A formal one is shown determine if she is correct. So we just need to find these numbers on here. There's F on this side. So finding 24, well, there's 20. And then it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going up in 2s, 22, 24. So let's mark 24 on this diagram. I'll make that nice and big. There's 24 degrees, F. Now we have to find minus 3 degrees C, which is this side. So again, there's zero, and we're going down the minuses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's going down on ones. So minus one, minus two, minus three. There is minus three degrees C there. She thinks minus 24F is colder than minus three. So it has to be below it. Is she correct? Yes. 24 degrees F is lower than 3 degrees C on the scale, would be enough to get your mark.
Hey, sweet National 5 applications to maths 2023, people, one question, 10. John owns a bike shop and has a team of mathematics. John owns a bike shop and has a team of mechanics to build each new bike. The table lists the tasks that need to be completed, so we've got a precedence table to complete. Complete the diagram below showing we're writing these tasks and the times in the boxes. So, we've got, the first one's on, one of them's on, we've four is D and two. So, there's our D which is two minutes. And before D, we've got G, H, I, and J. So G, H, I, and J could go in these boxes and we kind of need to work from there. But I'm going to find our first one first because I always work from the start. Our first task is F because it's got no preceding task and F has got a time of two minutes. So I can write F and two in this first box here because that's our first task. Now after F, we have got this one, this one, and that's it, two tasks. So the easiest way to do this is try and error. Try it one way. If it doesn't work, just go back and try again. So let's just try it one way. After F, we could have attached bicycle to bike clamp stand. That's A for one minute. And then, because it's not that one off, looking at A, after A, we could have B and C and H. Well, I've not got enough space now in that place, so I can just delete that A and go, look, I need three places to happen. So I need to, if I go here, I'm not going to be able to do it here. I'm going to have to go this way. So there you go, A has to go in there. So deleting that, I can put my A in one in here and go back up to where A was. And then we've got B, C, and H comes after A. So again, I'll just put them in anywhere. B, C, and H. Taking a lot of our numbers, one, seven, and five. Then I'll just check what comes after B. So B, C, and H is done. After B, we have got Jai. So we could put Jai here. And Jai is three. And after Jai, let's hope it's D. Yes, it is. So that one's in the right place. Or it could go that way. It doesn't really matter now. After C, looking down this list, we've got inflate has for four minutes. So we've got the I takes four minutes and just check after I would we'll go back to D because if not we need to do something else after I we we'll go back to D so that's okay and then check H what comes after H it's D so that one's okay as well so now we can go back down to this branch and complete after F is E there's one minute so I can put E in one. And after E is G for one minute. So I can put G in one. And just double check that after G, we go back to D, which we do here. So we've done that one. So we've completed our table. John thinks that the table mechanics have a big line in 50 minutes. Is it correct? Well, how you do these presence tables is you start at the start. So I've got task two minutes, and then it's the longest of these two, which is one minute. So add one minute. And then when I move on, I need to wait until the longest of these is finished. So that's seven minutes. So seven minutes. And then it's the longest of these two, that's four minutes. And then it's two minutes at the end. So that's the critical path, we call that. Seven plus three is three. Two plus three is one. Plus seven is 10. Plus four is 14. Plus two is 16 minutes. Is the minimum time. John is wrong since... 16 is bigger than 15. And we're done there. Okay, question four. 
Kieran and Dylan designing their garden and you've got all these tasks. The first thing we have to do is C and F. C is six hours, F is two hours. Okay, after C and F, well, what, where C and F is the last one before is this one, so that's G and that takes 45 minutes. Where G is the next one, so where it's here, paint the fence is three hours. And then you've got I, rough cast the wall, one hour 45. And then after I, we've got A, lay the patio, and E, lay the grass. Well, E's already done for us, so I, five hours, A, lay the patio. And after A, we've got B, one hour 30. And or H, two hours 50. Okay. Based on the times given, calculate the minimum time to complete all the work, give your answer in hours and minutes, so we're looking for a critical path. So we've got six plus 45 min plus three hours plus one hour 45 min plus five hours plus two hours 15 min. 17 hours I've got and then for the minutes, one hour 45. So that's 18 hours, 45 minutes. Next to this tables, SQA National 5 Apps, 2021 paper one question 10. Same one wants to make chili con carne. The table with list shows the list of tasks and the time taken for sale to complete them. So there's our tasks and then it says part A, complete the diagram below to show the tasks and the time in the boxes. It always says gives an additional diagram, which is on page 18, and the reason for that is sometimes you can do this by trial and error. Mess up the first diagram, do it again on the second one. To the first task, it says nothing before it. So that's A, that goes in the first box, and it takes three minutes. So there's A and three, it's already been done for me. And then we check what comes after A. So preceding task is what we're looking for A, that is B, and B takes five minutes. So I can note B and five as the next box. And then what comes after B? Well, before preceding task is B, that's C and that takes two minutes. So we've got C and two minutes. Now this is where you get a branch, you need to know well, where's this gonna go. So you can either do it trial and error and just delete as you go or look at the table. So I'm gonna look at the table. I know that the top branch goes one, two, then. Uh, so if I, if I was doing this question, I would just do it bit by bit and see how it go and just delete as I go. So I'm just going to say fly is in the pan, D comes after C. So let's try and put D in after C. If I just put D here, that is six minutes. And what else comes after C? F. Open the can of kidney beans and that takes two minutes. So after C is F and that's two minutes. And then try and complete a branch. So I'll just do the top one now, D. What comes after D, that's E, and that takes five minutes. And after E is J, but it's also after I, but you can see it jumps down to the branch, J. So this one will be J, and that is two minutes. Now, if you had messed this up, and you suddenly run out of your thing, you would just delete and go back to this point and do it again, or do it on the other thing. So now let's just check F's branch. After F is G, which is one minute, so I can write G in one. After G is H, which is one minute, so I can write H in one. After H is J, after H is I, which is two minutes, so I can write I, and two minutes. And then after I, we should get back to J, which it is right, so I am can continue on. So after J, it's K, which is 35 minutes. And it's L, which is three minutes. Doesn't matter which way round they go, I mean, in, in the end, we've got M for two minutes. And we're done there. Sarah claims she can make the chili con in 55 minutes. Based on the times given, is she correct? Well, let's check our times in our boxes. So we've got three plus five plus two. 
Now then we've got a branch and it doesn't join up again till here. So it's the longest time of the branch because we'll have to wait for one of them to finish. So that's six and five is 11, or it's two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna to have to add the six and five, which is 11, because that's the longest branch. And then we get to J, which is two. And then we've got K and L happening, but we can't move on until K is finished. So it's gonna take 35 minutes, even though L is two. And then we've got the two minutes on the end. So three plus five plus two plus six plus five plus two plus 35 plus two, 60 minutes. So she's wrong, no, it will take 60 minutes. SQA National Bible Applications and Maths 2023, People 1, Question 7. Biscuits are sold in tins in the shape of a cuboid as shown. The tins need to be packed into boxes with the lid facing upwards. There are two types of boxes available with the dimensions shown, box A and B. Calculate the maximum number of times going to be packed. Use working to justify your answer. This is actually a simplified version of a box packing because usually you can take your container and just move it around in different positions. But in this case, since this box is the same on the length and the breadth, it doesn't matter whether I turn that around, it's going to be the same either way. I need to keep that lid facing up. So really all I need to do is work out how many of these go in this box and how many of these go into that box and then just pick the best box. There's only one option for each. So let's look at box A. So our dimensions are 10, 10 and 15, 42, 51 and 50. So we've got 42 centimetres on one side, that's the length, the breadth is 51 and the height is 50. And we need to know that the length and the breadth need to go along the length and the breadth because the box it needs to be facing up the way, so the height needs to match the height. But 10 and 10 is the only options. And then we've got 15 height, so our 15 matches this one. So this is a big box, I suppose, and this is a small box. And then we've got 10 matches this one and 10 matches this one. So once we've worked out which size go with which size, we just divide them. So 42 divided by 10, but only whole number answers, you can't go above. So just do 10, 20, 30, 40, that equals about four. Notice the little tiddles means about, right? And then 51 divided by 10, that's about five. Five pens are 50 with one remainder. And then 15 into 50, 15, 30, 45. It's going to be three and a bit. So 50 divided by 15 approximately is three. So in total, remember we just times our answers together. Four times five times three. 20 times three is 60. So I can get 60 in box A. Now I need to do box B. Box B is exactly the same. So for box B, I always like to set it up as a table, my big box against my small box. Our length, breadth and height. So again, length, breadth and height. So this time the length of this one, depends what you call the length, but I'm use that, so 45. The other side is 72. And this time the height is 32. And again, we need to have against the height our 15 centimetres because it has to face up the way. And then the 10 centimetres need to go against the other ones. So doing our sums, we get 45 this time divided by 10, which is about 10, 20, 30, 44. I'll lose your little tiddles. Then we've got 72 divided by 10, which is about seven, seven tens are 70. And then we've got 32 divided by 15, 15, 30, that's about two. So our total for this box is equal to four times seven times two. Four sevens are 28, times two is 56. So determine the maximum number of boxes to be packed, max is equal to 60 in box A. SQA National 5, Application Maths 2022, Paper 2, Question 4. Quite a long question, this one. 
But let's look at it. To start with, a company produces sandwiches in packs and then crates for transport into shops. The dimensions of the sandwich box and the crate are shown with the filling label has to be placed on top. That's the limit how many sums we need to do. The sandwich boxes need to be laid with a filling label on top. They must be aligned in the same direction. Calculate the maximum number of sandwiches that we fitted into each crate. Okay. So, here's how I always think of this. I draw myself a table. And I always start off with my big box, or my big crate, or whatever it is, it is. And I write down the dimensions. Now let's just check these dimensions first of all. One centimetres and one is metres, so be careful to change them all to the same. So I'm just going to keep everything as centimetres because that's easy to work with. So I'm going to change all of these into centimetres by times and them by 100. So I've got 65 centimetres. I've got 48 centimetres. And I've got 25 centimetres. So then we just do our options for our small box. So option one. Let's just start with that. If we work at it, the, fi the, the filling has to stay there so I can have the 15 going along with the 65. So I now just do 65 divided by 15. And if that happens, I'll have the 10 going along here and the 8 going up here. So 48 divided by 10. And 25 divided by 8. So there is our first bunch of sums. That gives you 4.33, which you need to round to 4. That gives you 4.8, but then you need to use 4 because you can't get bits of a box. And the next number gives you 3.1. But again, you can't use bits of a box, so it's three. So we've got four, four, three for option one. So to work out how many can be fit in this way, we just times those answers together. Four times four times three. Four fours is 16. 16 times three is 48. So that's one way we could do it. But remember, we could turn our box around. It still has to stay facing up, but the 10 side could be going along this way as well. So for option two, we just start off with our 65 again, but this time we're going to divide that by 10. If that's the case, our 15 is going up here. So it's 48 divided by 15, which means the last sum must be 25 divided by 8. So we do all of those sums. 65 divided by 10 is 6.5, which we need to round to 6. 48 divided by 15 is 3.2, which we need to round to 3. And 25 divided by 8 is 3.1, which again has, means we've got 3 can fit in. So our total number is 6 times 3 times 3, which is 54. Last check to see if there's any more options. Well... I've got my box going that way and I turn it round and the box can go that way. But there's no other way I can put that in without tipping it, but I have to have the label facing up the way, so I'm done. So I now just pick the best option. The best option is clearly this option. So you can just write maximum of 54 boxes. So you get a mark for each of those options and a mark for your final answer. Okay, number nine continued. The packets are in the shape of a cuboid with external dimensions as shown. It's 5.5 centimetres, 2 centimetres, 2 centimetres. For delivery, the packets of sweets are packed into a box, 15 centimetres by 50 by 30. All the packs are in the same direction. Calculate the maximum number of sweets. So this is a box packing question. And there's a nice way you can do this question. So if I call that the height, then that's the height of this one. Uh, that's what's called that the length, and that's the length, and then call that the breadth, and that's the breadth. We're just going to compare in a table every option. So let's go up, let's go height, length, and breadth to start with. And it's always big and again small. So the height is 50, the length, so the height is 15, the length is 50. And the breadth is 30. 
So option one, we could do height against height. So divide by 5.5, 2 and 2. So we work all of them out and then we just switch the orders around. So this stays the same and we just switch these numbers around. We notice two are the same, so there's going to be not a lot of options. So if we look at option two, say, we could have 15, 50 and 30 again. And then the 5.5 could move and go against here, which would leave divide by two and two. So that'd be the next option. Or there's a third option, the 5.5 could move down to the third place. So 15, 50 and 30, divide by 5.5 here, but then we've just got two and two. And that's all the options, because if we switch the twos around, it makes no difference. It's just the 5.5 moving because the twos are the same. So we work out our three sums. So let's look at option one. You're going to get three answers. So looking at options one, 15 divided by 5.5 is about 2.7. So we round down always to two because you can't fit any extra in. 50 divided by two is 25 and 30 divided by two is 15. So we times them together. So our first option gives us two times 25 times 15, which is 750. 15 divided by 2, 7.5, so we round down to 7. 50 divided by 5.5 is 9.09, .09, so we round down to 9. And 30 divided by 2 is 15, so 7 times 9 times 15, 945. And then the last one, we well, know 15 divided by 2 is 7.5, so we round down to 7. 50 divided by 2 is 25, and 30 divided by 5.5 is 5.45, so we round that down to 5. So we've got 7 times 25 times 5, which is 875. Max you can pack is equal to 945, and we're done there. Next week, National 5 Applications of Maths 2023, paper 2, question 6. Lorna was travelling around Europe. She converted 650 pounds into Polish Lotties. I hope that's right. She was in Poland for four days. She spent 340 Polish Lotties. Each day she was in Poland and then she converted her Polish Lotties into Euros. How many Euros did she receive? I hate these questions, they're so silly. If you were in Poland, right? And you're going to change it into zotties. You wouldn't change it back to pounds first. You would just get told how much it's worth. But for this, these questions, you're not told what a zloty is worth in euros. So you're going to have to go back to pounds and then back to euros. That's how these questions work. So let's do it bit by bit by bit. Lorna converted £640 into Polish zlotties. Let's do that one first. 640 times. And the exchange rate for zlotties is 4.94. So I can just get my calculator out and write down whatever that is. Three one six one point six. So point sixty, because we'll just assume that every currency is decimal. Let's just write zlotties. Okay, next one. She was in Poland for four days and she spent 340 Polish Lotties each day she was in Poland. So she spent four times 340 which is 1360 Zlotties. And then says she, and then says she converted the rest into euros. So I now need to work out how much she's got left. So left is 3161.60 minus 1360, which equals 1801.60. Make sure you put in this for places, okay? Money. Zlotties. That's what she's got left. And now we want to change it back into euros. So if we go back to our table, we're on Zlotties. We can't get to euros. We need to go back to pounds, so divide. One hundred pounds 
times by the yields. The thing I need to do first of all is 1801.60 divided by her 4.94. That gives me 364.696, so 70, that's in pounds, and then to change it to euros, 364.70 times that exchange rate of 1.15, which equals 419.405. So four one euros. Now, if you did this sum and I did it earlier, as one go divide then times straight away, you actually get four one nine point forty because it will not round twice. But I've got a feeling you need to round twice because you changed it, then changed it. So uh, either way. So first question was on foreign exchange. Paper one, question one, and we had to work out the average of this person's earnings, but also that's the mean but also change it to pounds. So to work out the mean, you add them up and divide by how many there are, which is four. To change it back to pounds, you divide by the exchange rate, which is five real to the pound. So let's go ahead and add these numbers up. So we can just add in an extra box at the bottom. And we can add these numbers up. So we've got six plus four is 10, carry one. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 again carry one, we've got six, seven, 17, 18, carry one, we've got 10, 15, 16, carry one, and we've got three, six, nine, 12, 13. So we get one, three, six, 800. If we add them up, we need to divide that by four. So four goes into 13 three times with one left over, four fours is 16, four twos is eight, so we get 34,200, you'll get a mark for that. But then you need to remember to divide that by five because we need to change it back to pounds. So 34,200 divided by five. Five sixes is 30, carry four. Five eights is 40, carry two. Five fours is 20, five nothings is nothing. So our final answer is 6,840 pounds for our second mark. SQA National 5 Application of Maths 2019, Paper 2, Question 3. The graph shows how many pounds sterling can be bought for one euro during December 2017. Daniel changed 250 euros to pounds at 9 o'clock on the 7th of December. How many pounds did he receive? So we need to identify where 9 o'clock on the 7th is. There it is there. And we need to identify the exchange rate. So being careful, we read that correct rate. Go up to here. So we're on 0.85. And then it goes something, 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 0.86. So it's gone up in twos because there's five divisions. So it's 0.852 at that point. So that means that we've got 250 times 0 0.852. That is 213 euro. Daniel was working in France. He bought a laptop costing 400 euros. He calculated this was equivalent to 334.80. Use your graph to find the date you bought the laptop. So if we had 400 euros, we would times by an exchange rate and get 334.80. So if we take, go backwards from there, 334.80 divided by 400 will give us the exchange rate. Or if you don't like that, you could just take 400 and times by each of these exchange rates until you get the correct answer. But I'm going to do it the quick way. So to work out the exchange rate, I'm going to do 334.80 divided by 400, and a calculator that gives me 0 0.837. And now all I need to do is go back up to here. So 0 0.837, I need to find on the graph, well, I've got 0 0.83, so seven's gonna be between these two. So we can see that here, 0 0.83, 83246, that'll be 837. So I can read that date off the graph, which is the 9th of December at 9 o'clock. So we can just put that down. 9th of December at 0900. 
And we're done there. It's going to five up because the maths for 18 people, one question seven. Gavin is going to South America to do charity work. He changes 750 to Bolivian, Boliviano. Here is the currency exchange rate table. How many does the Boliviano does he receive? So we're, if you're starting with 750 and this is in pounds, you can just go along and find the right one. So we want Bolivian, so it's this one here. I get nine for every one, so I need to pick the right one. 750 times nine. Nine times zero is zero. Nine times five is 45, carry four. Nine times seven is 63. 63 and four is 67. So here we see 6750 Boliviano. He spends 2,700 Bolivian Boliviano. He changes the remaining Bolivian Boliviano into Argentine Peso. How many Peso does he receive? Well, first of all, I'm going to have to work out how much he's got left. So I'll take away some. 6750 minus 2,700 is 4,050. So he's changing it from this one to this one. Now that's in the same side of the table. So you can't actually do it directly. You have to go back first by dividing and then times. So I'm going to divide by nine times by 20. You can do all that in one go if it was a calculator, but you can't in this case. So back to pounds. I do 40, 50 divided by 9. So you need to be able to divide by 9. We use a little bus stop, is what some people call it. A little table. Counting the nines, 9 times 4 is 36, with 4 left over. 9 times 5 is 45, and 9 nothing is nothing. So that's £450. So then 2 peso, we've got 450 times the peso rate, which is Argentinian peso is 20. So we're times them by a multiple of 10. So the easiest way to do that is times by 10. So that gives me 4,500. And then we're going to double that number. 0, 0, 2 fives is 10, 2 fours is 8, and 1 is 9. It gets 9,000 peso. And we're done on that question. £1,052 per week. National insurance is calculated before deductions. Calculate Lynn's national insurance payment. Right. So up to £242, you don't pay anything. Then between these two numbers, you pay 13.2%. And then above this number, you pay 3.25%. So I need to work them all out individually. So Lynn earns 1052 So for the upper bracket, I take away 967 to see how much you pays at 3.2%. That's 85 for our upper. And then for your mid part, I just need to take away these two numbers from each other. 967 minus 242. Which is 725. And then on the rest, you pay nothing, so you just don't need to do anything. So now we can work out the national insurance. So for the upper part, we have got over 967 is 3.25%. So 3.25% of 85. Getting a calculator out, that is 3.25 divided by 100 times 85, 2.7625, two decimal places, £2.76. Now we do the same for the mid. So our mid one is 725 and 13.25%. So 13.25% of 725. Get a calculator for that. 13.25 divided by 100 times 725 is 96.06. 96.06. So adding these together to get the full national insurance. So adding them together, our total national insurance 
2 pen 76 plus 96 all sex, 2.76 plus 96 point all sex is 82 pound eight, 98 pound and 82 pence. Okay, next question. Lim pays 4.5% of her wage and her pension and our income tax is 52.08, find the net pay. So for our pension, we need to work out 4.5% of her weekly wage, which was 1052. So using a calculator for that, 4.5 divided by 100 times 1052 is 47.34. And then we need to work out her net pay. So we take her full pay, which is 1052, minus everything that we need to take off. So the 9882, uh, it's the national insurance. The tax is 5208. And the pension is £47.34. So we'll just get a calculator and work all of that out. 1052 minus 98.82 minus 52.08 and minus £47.34. And we get 85.376. And we're done there. SQA National 5 Maths 2022 applications. Paper 2, question 3 said Laura earns £40,000 and £560, £40,560 per annum. National insurance is paid on a person's salary before deductions, as such as contrib pension contributions. Blah. SQA National 5 applications of Maths 2022. Paper 2, question 3 said Laura earns £40,000. £560 per annum. National insurance is calculated on a person's salary before deductions, such as pension contributions. And there's a table for it. Calculate her national insurance payment. Let's have a look at this table. It says up to 9568 you get 0%. Between 9568 and 50270 you pay 12%. And then above that, which won't account for this person, 2%. You do not just do 12% of £40,560 because you pay no interest on the first amount. So you have to work out the difference between £40,560 and this lower limit of 9568 So step one, I need to do £40,560 minus 9568 Remember that's all calculator work, so in a calculator that is £30,992. And that is one mark there. Our second mark is then for calculating 12% of that. So we do 12% of 30,992. So in a calculator, times by 12, divide by 100. And you get 3719.04. And we're done there. Remember two decimal places because it's money. Next grade National 5 Applications of Maths 2021 Paper 2 Question 5. Paula's annual salary is 54890 National insurance is calculated on a person's salary before deductions, such as pension. Calculate her annual national insurance payment. So it's a national insurance question. So how do we work this table? Well, it says 0% for the first 8632. So she pays £0 for this line. It then says between these numbers, 12%. Now she earns above that. So I just take the numbers away. If she earned between those numbers, you would take her, her wage away, force 8632 away. But since she doesn't earn between that, she earns above, you just take them away. And you're going to times that by 12%. Now you can times by 12 and divide by 100. Or 0.12 is a quicker way to times by 12%. So let's just do that. £50,000 minus 8632 gives us that number times by 12 divided by 100, or 0 0.12, and you get 4.96416. Now it says, over 50,000 pounds is 2%. Well, he, Paula does earn over 50,000, so we do 54,890 minus 50, times 2%, 0 0.02. If you don't know that, times 2 divided by 100. 54,890. Minus 50,000 times 2 divided by 100, or 0 0.02, is 97.8, 9780. 
So we just need to add up my two answers. 496416 plus 97 pound 80 is 506196. And we're done there. Part B, Paul pays 8.7% of her annual salary to her pension. Her income tax is 8204 and she's paid in 52 weeks. What is her net pay? So we need to work out her pension because we're already over tax and national insurance. Net pay means you take her pay and take away all the stuff that she has to pay out. So it's 8.7% of her salary, which is 54,890. Eight point seven divided by hundred times fifty four eight nine zero four seven seven five pound forty three. So her net pay is her pay minus everything. So what have we got? We have got five zero six one ninety six from part A. We have got tax of eight two. 0437 and we've got the pension we've just worked out 477543 so we'll just take away everything 5061.96 minus 8204.37 minus 4775.43 is a grand total of 3684.24 per year now, let's check the question. It also says she's paid in 52 weekly payments. What's her weekly net pay? So for a week, we just divide by 52 because it's 52 weeks in the year. 708.62. And we're done there. H3 National 5 Maths 2023 paper 1 question 1. Josh earns £9 per hour and works 30 hours per week. Uh, his weekly outdoors are 220. This is always remaining money. He books a holder for £566. He will take £800 spending money with him. Calculate the minimum number of weeks it will take him to save this amount. Okay, so he earns, let's just go through this, £9 per hour, 30 hours per week. So we need to work out his weekly wage. So weekly wage equals 30 times 9, well 9 for these is 27, so that's £270. But then his outgoings are £220 a week, so what he's got left per week is equal to 270 minus 220. Again, there's no need for a sum here, just count up 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, £50 is what he's got left per week. It now says Joe saves all of this, so he saved £50 per week, and he books a holiday cost in 566 and he needs £800 spending money. So I need to know how much he needs. So for the holiday, he needs. Now I will do a sum just to be in 566 plus 800. Well, that's pretty easy. 800, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1300, so 1366. So calculate the minimum number of weeks it will take up to save the amount. You need to do 1366 divided by 50. So you can do that by counting in 50s if you want or do a sum. I think the easiest way to say it is one week is equal to £50. That means two weeks is equal to £100. So I need to get up to £1,300, so I need to times that by 13, so times them by 13 weeks will give me 26 weeks, will be £1,300, so then 27 weeks you can obviously see is £1,350 and 28 weeks he will have £1,400 and he needs £1,366 so it will take him 28 weeks. Obviously you could have just directly divided 1366 by 50 
and you would have got 27 points something, which is thrown into 28 weeks. It's going to ask five applications of maths. 2023, paper two, question seven. Dave has a job in an office typing job documents. He is contracted to work 35 hours per week. He earns £11.20 per hour. He's paid time and a half. For overtime, last week he worked 37.5 hours. What is his gross pay? He paid with four deductions. Okay, does he speak? So, he works 35 hours normally. So his normal pay is 35 times his £11.20. Then we need to add on whatever he gets at time and a half. So I need to work out the difference between 37.5 and 35, which is 2.5 hours. So he's getting 2.5 times his £11.20 still, but at time and a half means times by 1.5. You can do the two sums separately if you feel you want to, or brackets and let's just do it in one. Brackets, 35 times £11.20 plus brackets, 2.5 times £11.20 times time and a half of 1.5 is £434 exactly. And that's part A that. Six. Farah works in a shop, she earns £8.40 an hour. She's paid overtime at time and a half. In January, she works 100 hours plus 30 hours overtime. Then she paid these expenses. What's her net pay? So let's work out our gross pay. That's going to be 100 times £8.40 plus 30 times £8.40 times 1.5. So that's just 840 for this bit. 30 times 1.5 is 45, so if I do 45 times £8.40, so that's 84 times 45 to work it out. 5 fours is 20, 5 eights is 40 and 2, 0, 4 fours is 16, 4 eights is 32 plus 1 is 33, that gives us 0, 8, 7, 3. So the answer to this bit of the sum is equal to 378. So our total gross pay is 840 plus 378. So that's 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 18. Now, we then need to take off everything that comes off. So we've got 3350, 6192, and 2520. So that gives us 2910116, 5678910, 6789101112. So our net pay is equal to 1218 minus 120.62. 10 minus 2 is 8, 9 minus 6 is 3, that's 7, that's 9, that's 0, that's 1. So a £1,097.38. It's Green National 5 Apps, 2021, paper one, question five, pay in overtime. Part one, A is Lucy works the lifeguard, her overtime rate's time and a half. During one week, Lucy worked 40 hours at normal rate and 10 hours at overtime rate, she's paid 550. Calculate her normal hourly rate of pay. So her normal hourly rate of pay, I need to work out basically what would, what would she have got if she'd worked normal hours? Well, she's worked 10 hours at time and a half. So 10 times 1.5 or 3 over 2 is 15 hours. So our total hours is equal to 40 plus 15, which is 55. So she got paid £550 for essentially 55 hours. So you do 550 divided by 55, which is exactly 10. So £10 an hour. And there we are. Alan is also a lifeguard. His normal hours are 40 hours per week. Over the course of five weeks, he worked an additional 16 hours overtime. Expresses overtime hours as a percentage of his normal hours. 
expression as a percentage is the same as expression as a fraction, and then change that to a percentage. So he's worked 16 extra hours over five weeks, not 16 a week, just 16 over five weeks. And don't be tempted to write 40 on the bottom here. He didn't work 40 hours, he worked 40 hours five for five weeks. So 40 times five, so that's 200 hours. Now to change that to a percent, well, I know percent's out of 100, so I can divide by two, divide by two, to get eight out of 100, which is 8%, I want that there. Scatter graphs, SQA and National 5 apps, 2021 paper 1 question 2. Elephants continue to go for the duration of their lives. The table shows the sample of elephants and their shoulder heights on the grid draw a scatter graph. So a scatter graph is just plot with points, go along the X, up the Y, being very careful. So let's just do that in bits. So the first one is 12, 1. Let's look at our scale first, actually. So it goes up in ones on the side. I can see that by counting the boxes, but up the up the side, it goes up in 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, up to 100. So I need to be very careful when I'm plotting this. So the first one is 12, 230. So I go to 12, up to 200, and then 10, 20, 30. So I'm going to plot this on now. I'm on 10, 11, 12, 10, 20, 30. There's my first dot. The next one is 17, 250. So 17, 2 after 15, straight up. I'm at 200 and then up to 250. It's in the middle of 200 and 300. I quite double check before I mark it and I'm fine with that. 28 to 70. So 25, 26, 27, 28. Strain on that line up to 250, 260, 270. That'll be there. So that's 28 and 270, 35 and 275. So 35 is nice uh, straight along. 35. 200, 250, 260, 270, 275 would be right in the middle, so about there. And then the last one, 43 and 300. So 43, all the way up to 300, so 41, 2, 3, and I'm on the 300 line, so there we are there. And then we get a nice scatter graph. Draw a line of best fit, so we need a ruler for that. A line of best fit is when you put it, so it lines up as many points as you can, or at least that kind of equal distance, straight distance away, best you can. That will probably do. And then just neatly draw on your line in. And there's quite a bit of leeway with a line of best fit, so don't worry if you've got a bit off. The last bit says use your line to estimate the age of an African elephant is 260. So I'm going to zoom in again to see where 260 is. There's 260 there. So if I can get a ruler or just draw a straight line, I'm just going to draw it without a ruler so you can see it because it tabs it. But you just use a ruler to get that line and then you just go along to the line and straight down to where it meets the other axis. So in this case, I can just go straight down there and I'm sitting about 21. But you might be plus or minus a few depending on how your line of best fit is drawn. But I'm going to write 21 for my line. And I'm done there. It's a great newborn baby that we've already in the table as shown below, so here's the table, and then on the grid, draw a scatter graph to show this data. So for part C, we have to draw a scatter graph. So remember, that just means weight, check where that is up beside, length must be down the bottom, and I'm just plotting points the best I can. So 2.7 and 46, 46, 2.7. Well, it's going up in ones, so that's 2.7 there. So I'll just put a little dot, pick it off as I go, then 47 and 2.8. So there's 47, 2.7, 2.8, tick it off. 49 and 3.5. So there's 49, 3.5 will be here, tick it off as I go. 51 and 3.7. So I go to 51 and I go up to 3. 0.567, making sure I'm being as accurate as I can, taking my time. 52, 3.4, 52, and 3.4 will be there. 52 again, but this time 3.7, so on the same line, 3.567, there it is there. 54 and 4.0, so 54 is the second last one, so there's 4.0 right there. And the last one, 55 and 5.4.4, 55 is the last place, 4.4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
and we get a completed scatter graph like so. Part two, draw a line of best fit on your scatter graph. So I'm going to do the rule for this. So there's my scatter graph, and it can't go through every single point, so I'll just make it so that at the very best, I get the points are equal distance away from the ruler line either side. That's a good line. It doesn't have to be exact, and it doesn't have to go through that first point. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If it does, it does. I'm going to say about there, maybe a little bit more, is a good line of best fit. And I'll just draw my line in nice and neat. And you get a line of best fit. Either, as long as it doesn't join the dots and it isn't obviously way off, you'll get the marks for this. Use your line to estimate the weight of a baby who is 50 centimetres when born. So I need to find 50 centimetres. So let me just make that a little bit neater. So I can do this showing you by highlighting this 50. I go up to where it joins the line and then read off the mark. And the best thing to do is actually get a pen different colour and literally get a ruler and join that up. Now I can do that without any bother and then do the same on this side. And you can get a nice close enough answer of 3.123. So I write 3.3 and the answers in kilograms. And we're done there for the sky. Next grade, National 5 Upcase of Mass 2023, Paper 2, Question 5. Stuart records the chlorine levels in his hot tub. I do that every day. A sample of the levels is shown below. For these levels, calculate the mean, then standard deviation. Okay, standard stuff here. To calculate the mean, you add them up, divide by how many there are. So let's write down the sum we need to do. Always write down sums that you're doing, even if you're using a calculator. 0.8 plus 1.9 plus 1.1 plus 1.2 plus 2.6, plus 3.1, plus 2.4, plus 2.1, in brackets, because I'm then dividing all of that by 7, because it's 7 days. So, calculator, take full advantage of this calculator, 0.8, plus 1.9, plus 1.1, plus 2.6, plus 3.1, plus 2.4, and the last one, plus 2.1, if I'd use brackets, I would just put it in brackets. I'll just press equals and then divide by 7. I get 2. Units are not usually required for the mean, but it doesn't even give us units anyway. So there we go. Calculate the standard deviation. From the start of the exam paper, there's two ways to calculate the standard deviation. I'm going to show you one of them. So the formula I use is for the standard deviation is the square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared over n minus 1. But there is another more complicated form I feel, so I always use this one. Now, x bar cat stands for the mean. So I'm doing every number, take away the mean, squared, add them all up, divide by how many I've got. A nice little table to, to illustrate this. So I usually just draw a free bit table here. x goes here, that's all my numbers. x minus x bar, which is the top of the formula, take away the mean, and then x minus x bar squared. And at the end, you get a nice total down here somewhere. And it's this, this total that goes in the whole of the top of the formula. And then you divide by one less than the number of numbers you've got and square root the answer. So let's write down our numbers, 0 0.8, 1.9. And then we've got 1.1, 2.6. And then we've got 3.1, 2.4. And finally, our last one was 2.1. Being very careful, you don't miss any of these. I'm just going to delete this little bit that I added so I can work. Okay, x minus x bar. Now, you don't really need to write down the sum you're going to do, but I'll do the first one. Our x bar was 2, so we do 0 0.8 minus 2. Don't worry, we get negative numbers here. You are going to get negatives. Minus 1.2. 1.9 minus 2. Minus 0 0.1. 1. 1.1 1. 1 minus 2. Minus 0 0.9. 2.6 minus 2. 0 0.6. 3.1 minus 2. 1.1. 1. 1. 
2.4 minus 2, 0 0.4. 2.1 minus 2, 0 0.1. Your negatives are fine because look, when you put a negative in a calculator and square it, you get a positive answer. Just put brackets around it. Let me show you. Bracket minus 1.2, close the bracket. Press squared. Oh, look, it's a positive number. Now, you can just drop a negative when you square it in the calculator, just put 1.2 squared. So I'm going to do it for all of these numbers. So I've got 1.44, 0.1 squared, 0 0.01, 0 0.9 squared. 0 0.81, 0 0.6 squared, 0 0.36, 1.1 1 .1 squared, 1.21, 0 0.4 squared is 0 0.16, and 0 0.1 squared I've already done is 0 0.01. So now I add all these up to get a grand total. 1.44 plus 0 0.01 plus 0 0.81 plus 0 0.36 plus 1.21 plus 0 0.16, plus 0 0.01, we get 4. Rather unlikely, but there we are. So that means we can work out our standard deviation. Our standard deviation is simply the square root of 4, because we just worked that out, divided by 1 less than the number of numbers we started with, which is 6, because we started with 7. None of this is non-calculator, so I'm not even going to bother simplifying that. Square root of make a bracket, 4 divided by 6, close the bracket, 0 0.81649, 0 0.81649, round that to a better degree of accuracy, really should be one decimal place, but I'll put 2 just in case, let's call that 0 0.82, and we're done there. It's fine, Colin's hot tub had a mean of 2.2 and a standard deviation of 4, 1.4. Make two valid comparisons about the cloning levels of Stuart and Collins hot tubs. Well, let's look at our answers again. We got 2 and 0 0.82. So for Stuart, we had a mean of 2 and a standard deviation of 0 0.82. And then we can just work on this. His friend Colin had a mean so let's compare the means first, 2.2 and 2. So comparing the mean, you always use the word on average. On average, the chlorine levels and well, Collins is higher. Collins hot tub are greater than Stewart's. since 2.2 is bigger than 2. And there you go, there's a mark. Now let's compare the standard deviation. Standard deviation is about how variable the levels are. So Stewart's was 0 0.82, Collins is 1.4, so Collins' chlorine levels are more varied. So Collins' chlorine levels are more varied than Stewart's. I suppose in the hot tub, not actually the people, but you'll be fine with that. I'll just do it for the sake of clarity. And we can just write since, again, the idea here is 1.4 is bigger than 0 0.82. I always just remember one statement, really, bigger. SQA National 5 Applications of Maths 2022 Paper 2 Question 2 says the price of lambs sold in September was recorded. A sample of the prices in pounds is shown. Calculate the mean. Calculate the mean, add them up, divide by how many. So you get 72 plus 75 plus 73 plus 68 plus 65 plus 70. There's six numbers, so I'm going to divide the whole answer by six. I will just shove all that straight in a calculator. If you use brackets, you can do it in one go, and you will get 70.5 as the final answer for one mark. Standard deviation is a formula given at the start of the exam paper, and you're given this formula, and I always use the top one because I find that easy to work with, but you might have used the bottom one. So I'm going to use the top one for this question. So there's all our data, and I find it easy just to draw a table. So let me just fill this in, X, and then write all our numbers. 
And then in the middle goes x minus x bar. And then x minus x bar squared. If you go to, to try and remember that, if you look at the formula, it says x minus x bar on the top. And then it says x minus x bar squared. So you're taking it from the formula. X bar, remember, is our mean. And we just calculated that as 70.5. So just a little note on the side, x bar equals 70.5. So in the middle, we do x minus x bar. So 72 minus 70.5 gives me 1.5. 75 minus 70.5 gives me 4.5. 73 minus 70.5 gives me 2.5. 68 minus 70.5 is minus 2.5. 65 minus 70.5 is minus 5.5. And 70 minus 70.5 is minus 0 0.5. In our next column, we need to square each of those numbers. So we times them by themselves. So 1.5 squared is 2.25. And we're using a calculator for all this work. 4.5 squared is 20.25. 2.5 squared is 6.25. 2.5 squared again, 6.25. 5.5 squared is 30.25 and 0 0.5 squared is 0 0.25. Now remember, I did that in my head, but you can use a calculator for that. And then at the bottom, you get a total. So you add up all of these numbers. If you add them all up using a calculator, you get 65.5. So that means we can work out our standard deviation is just the square root of the number we just found out divided by one less than how many numbers we've got. So we've got six to start with, so I divide by five. And we can do all of that in a calculator. Place the square root, open a bracket, 65.5 divided by five, close your bracket. And if you do that, you get an answer of 3.62. And we're done. So where are you getting the marks for that? Well, you get a mark for calculating your x minus x bar correctly, 2.25, 20.25, 6.25 twice, 30.25 and 0 0.25. So you need to get that far. And then a mark for substituting into the square root and a mark for the final answer. Obviously, you can use the other method if you prefer as well. So when it says make two valid comparisons, it means compare the mean and compare the standard deviation. The mean is easy. We'll start off with the mean. Keyword for comparing the mean you have to say on average. You need to use the word average. If you do not, you'll not get any mark regardless of what you say. So on average, and then just compare the biggest and the smallest. So £70.20, and before we got £70.50. And remember before it was September, and now it is October. On average, more lambs are sold in September. You could say because £70.50 is bigger than £7.20. You don't actually have to say because £7.50 was bigger than £7.20. You used to in the past, but you'll get away with just the first sentence there. But I would urge you just to put in the extra bit just to be on the safe side if you're doing this this year. So next we'll pick up a standard deviation, and all you need to remember about standard deviation is use the word consistent. Smaller standard deviation, more consistent. So this is about the prices of lambs. Price of lambs standard deviation in August was £3.85, but in September it was £3.62. So this prices of lambs was more consistent in September. So that's all we need to write. The prices of lambs was more consistent. in September. Alternatively, you could have said less consistent in August, or more spread out in August, or less spread out in September. All these things would work. I would always write because, and then write in my standard deviations, £3.62 is less than their number in August of £3.85. Being asked by that piece of art, 21, paper two, question nine. A company uses a packing machine to put sweets in packets. The number of sweets in a sample of packets is counted. 
and the number of success packets shown below. Find the mean and standard deviation. So standard thing here, you look at the start of the exam paper and you'll find that the standard deviation is the square root of the sum of x minus x bar square over n minus 1. And that's the most common one that most people use. There is another one, but I'm just going to show this one. If you use the other one, then great. So to work this out, usually draw a little table. That's my x, then x minus x bar from the top, and then another column, then x minus x bar squared. And the game here is you put all your numbers down the first column, so that is 39, 39, 42, 41. And 43, 36. And we add all them up. That gives me a total of 240, which means my mean, which is the answer to the first part of the question, called x bar, is 240 divided by 6, because there's 6 numbers. which is 40. So it's 40 sweets on average. So now in the middle, you do each number minus 40. So minus one, minus one, two, one, three, and minus four. Don't worry about minus numbers here, because you're going to square them. Now my tip is, if you're using a calculator to square, don't put minus one squared in the calculator unless you use brackets, because it'll give you a negative answer. When you square a negative number, When you square a negative number, it's positive. So it's 1 squared, which is 1. 1 squared, which is 1. 2 twos is 4. 1 ones is 1. 3 threes is 9. 4 fours is 16. We add all them up. And you get 32. So that's our key number now. So now the standard deviation is easy. The standard deviation is just the square root of 32 over... There's six numbers, so one less is five. Now, in a calculator, just make sure you use brackets around the square root thing. Square root, then bracket, because otherwise it will square root of 32 and divide by five at the end, which you don't want. So it's 32 divided by five in brackets under the square root sign, which gives me 2.529. I'll just round that to 2.53. And we're done there. The company purchased a new packing machine. The number of sweets in a sample of packets from the new machine is counted and the mean is 40 and the standard deviation is 1.7. Make two comments. So our old machine, the mean was in the standard deviation. We got 40 as well and 2.53. So make two comparisons. Let's compare the mean first. To compare the mean, you always write on average. So on average, they're both the same. So the new machine and old machine pack the same number of sweets. Per pack. Okay, because 40 is equal to 40. The number of sweets per packet for the old machine was more varied than the new machine because 2.53 is bigger than 1.7 or you could say the number of sweets per packet for the old machine was less consistent or the number of sheets from sweets for the new machine was more consistent number of words per minute he typed during a 14 minute period with to calculate the medians and the lower and upper quartiles remember for median you need them in order from smallest to biggest so be careful doing that let's do this now the smallest number i think is 37 so let me write 37 and i think that appears twice so 37 and 37
I miss any and do apologise. 39 is next. And then I can see we're in the 40s now. The lowest is 42. And then we get two 44s. So 42 to 44, 44. And then I'm pretty sure we're getting 40. Oh, I missed 41. See, you always miss some. So let's put that in between 39 and 42. It's 41. Then there's 46, 47, 48. That was two 47s as well. Of course, I'm off as I go so I can keep track. Then I've got a 49. And then I'm going to run out of space, but it's fine. 51, 54. There we go. We can see that, can't we? Okay, so there's all my numbers. So now the median is the one in the middle when you put them in order. So I need to find the middle. A few ways you know it, you can cross off top and bottom as you go, which I will just do, but I won't cross them off. Actually, I'll just note them. Top and bottom. Top and bottom. Top and bottom. Bottom and top. Bottom and top. Bottom and top. Ah, there's two in the middle. There's these two here. So the median's in the middle of these two. Between 44 and 46, that should be obviously 45. But if you don't know that, add them up. Take by two. So now we want to find our quartiles. Still get that little thing for clarity. So our quartiles, remember, are the middle of the first half and the middle of the second half. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I go one, two, three, one, two, three. There's our quartile there. So I'll just note that. That's quartile one. Similarly on the other side, that one must be quartile three. Just check one, two, three, one, two, three. Yep, yep. And then just to answer the question in words, so our median is equal to 45. Our quartile three is equal to 48. And our quartile one is equal to 41. Words per minute, I suppose you could write, but we'll just leave it there. Construct a box plot for this set of data. Box plot, right. So how box plots work, remember, is your quartiles go on the ends of your boxes, your median inside the box, and then your lower, highest and lowest numbers at the end. So let's do the, where's our highest and lowest numbers? Our lowest is 37, our highest is 54. Lowest is 37, highest is 54. Okay, there's our picture. It does go up in ones, but double check it. So 35, 36, 37. I've got 37 right here. So that's my position. I'll just put a little dot right now. And then 54, 50, 51, 2, 3, 4. Being very careful to be accurate. So where's my start and end positions? On the box. And then my quartiles, 41 and 48. So 40 is here, so 41, that's where my box starts. And 48, 45, 46, 47, 48, that's where my box ends. And you really should be using a ruler, but I will just uh, do it. I can get straight lines on this, but you should be using a ruler. 41 and 48, connecting that box up, connecting that up to our start and end points, and then putting our median in, which we can, can put that one line there for clarity. Our median was, remember, 45. So I'm on 40, 41, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is right there. We can note these things. So that's our lowest, highest, median, quarter 1, quarter 3. But you should probably get away with just drawing the box and you'll be fine. Calculate the interquartile range for the number of words. The interquartile range, remember, is simply quartile 3 minus quartile 1, which we've already got twice now. So quartile 3, 48 minus 41. 48 minus 41, 7. So 7 words per min. Lynn works in the same office as Dave. Lynn also records the number of words per minute she can type. The interquartile range for the number of words that Lynn can type per minute is five. Make a valid comment. Like interquartile range is how spread out the data is. It's pretty much the same as standard deviation, same comment. So it's about how varied they are. Okay. So Lynn is five 
d with 7, the number of watts d types per minute is more varied than lengths since 7 is bigger than 5. Done. Question 3. The temperature in degrees Celsius of a restaurant fridge is recorded each day and the temperatures over the 13 period day were these temperatures. For the data calculate the median, lower and upper quartiles. So we might as well put the data in order first. So let's look for the smallest number, 2.9 is I see. After 2.9, we have got 3.2, I think. And we've got another 3.2. And then we've got a 3.2 again. Then a 3.3. .3. Then another 3.3. Then I see a 3.4. And then two 3.6s. 3.7. 4.1. And 4.2. 4.2 again, actually. So there's our data in order from smallest to biggest. So we need to find the middle. The easiest way to find the middle is just to kind of come in, top to bottom. So if I just make little marks, knocking off the top and the bottom. There we are, you should see our middle number here, that's our median. So then we want to find the middle of the left and the middle of the right for our quartiles. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to occur here. So quartile one is 3.2. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to occur here. So quartile three is between 3.7 and 4.1. So let me just add them up. That gives me 7.8. Divide that by two. 3.9. So our median is 3.4. Our lower quartile is 3.2. And our upper quartile is 3.9. And what we're in degrees Celsius each time. Okay. Part B, construct a box plot for this set of data. And this one grid is on page 16. Right, so our lowest number is 2.9. So that's going to be here. I'll label that 2.9. Our highest number is 4.2, which is here. So we've got our lower and a higher limit. Our lower quartile is 3.2, which we know is here. Our upper quartile is 3.9, which will be in the middle of 3.8 and 4. So that'll be here. And our median is at 3.4, which is there. Box goes around the quartiles. There's our median. Quartile 1, quartile 3, median. And we connect this up. And there we go. There's our box. Calculate the interquartile range. Q3 minus Q1. So we've got 3.9 minus 3.2. The temperature of a cafe fridge was also recorded for the same 13 period day, but interquartile range of these temperatures was 0 0.9 degrees Celsius. Make one valid comment. So we got an interquartile range of 0 0.7. Theirs is 0 0.9, which is higher. So the cafe fridge these temperatures were less consistent at 
as 0 0.9 degrees is bigger than 0 0.7 degrees Celsius. Box Box and Intercourter Range, SQA National 5 Apps, 2021, Paper 1, Question 6. Mr. Kenneth asks his class how much money they spent on their lunch, the results are shown in the box box. Calculate the interquartile range. So the interquartile range, remember, is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. On a box plot, if I zoom this in, it's the end of the boxes. So if I work out these numbers, I'll be good to go. I've already got one, that's just two. And this other one, I'll need to work out. So again, divisions, it's going up one, two, three, four, five. So it's going up in point twos. So 3.2, 4, 6, 8, and the middle makes 9. So I've got 3.9 for my other end. So my interquartile range, I can just do 3.9 minus 2, which equals to 1.9. But remember, we are in money, so I'm going to put 1.90 or £1.90. The money spent on lunch by Mrs. Mrs. Campbell's class had an interquartile range of £1.82. Make one valid comment comparing the money spent on lunch by Mr. Kenneth's and Mrs. Campbell's class. So when you compare an interquartile range, you complain how spread out or how variable things are. So we look at the numbers. This one's higher than that one. So we can say that the money spent on lunch by Mr. Kenneth's class is more varied than Mrs. Campbell's class. The money spent on lunch, so being in context, by Mr. Kenneth's class is more varied, because the number's bigger, than Mrs. Campbell's class. I would always write why, so since £1.90 is greater than £1.82. Don't really technically need that statement, but just to be on the safe side. A sub SQA National 5 application to Maths 2023, paper 1, question 11. A survey was conducted in favourite pie films. The results were 80 for apple, 40 for cherry, and 60 for lemon. Construct a pie chart to illustrate this information. So to construct a pie chart, we need a protractor. But first of all, we need to calculate our angles. So to calculate your angles, it's each individual, we need to do the fraction of the circle. So it's 80 out of the total times 360, because it's 360 degrees in a circle. So our total, if I just put it at the bottom here, is 80, 120, 130, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, which is handy because 180 goes into 360. So the fraction for the first one is 80 out of 180 and then times the 360 for the angle. So you can do this division first, which is 2 times 180. You can do this division first, which is 2 times your 80, which is 160 degrees. Similarly for this one, 40 out of 180 times 360. Well, 360 divided by 180 is 2 times 40 is 80 degrees. And your last one, 60 out of 180 times 360. 60 divided by 180 is 2 times 60 is 120 degrees. Just double check that these three numbers add up to 360. So We've got 120, 200, 360, so chances are you're okay. So now you get your protractor and start filling this in. So I've got my protractor, so now we turn that around so that it's vertical. We make sure the, the middle goes on the dot, and we make sure it's lined up through the zero as best you can. Now, mine's won't be as accurate as yours can be, because I'm using electronics. But the first angle I want to draw is 160 degrees. So there's my protractor. It's going through the outside scale. So go all the way around to 160, which is way down here. And I make a little mark at that point. I then get rid of my protractor. And we get a ruler and join this up. I don't need a ruler on my pad. I can just make a straight line by joining it. So let me just get it back to this normal size. It's going to go to there. And then I can just adjust it and make sure it fits. And we're done there. Let's just double check that angle before we move on. 160, we're done. Well done. Let's move on to our next angle. Next angle is 80 degrees. So what we do is we get our protractor. We turn it around so it is lined up 
against our new line. So putting that in the middle, lining it nice and up as best you can, pushing it up. A fine adjustment, good enough for me. And then we're looking for AA, so I'll zoom in. We're still going through the bottom scale. So zooming in, going all the way down to 80, which is over here. And moving it out of the way and getting your straight line and your ruler, joining it up through that zero, making sure it's nice and neat to the end. And again, always double check, have you done an 80 degree? So my protractor on the middle. Yep, it's going 80, so we're good there. And then we can just measure our last angle to make sure that it actually is 120. It should be if you've done everything accurately, but a, a double check is always handy. Turn it around so it's going through our new line. Line it up, slightly off, but I'll take that because then I'm doing that on an iPad. You just try to be as accurate as you possibly can to get this. You can see it's pretty much bang on. So there we are. We can then just label our pie chart so that we get rid of this. So the first one we drew was our apple. So I'll label the angle just to be very clear. The angle I drew was 160, 160 degrees. That's apple. And that represents 80 people. Our next one we drew was cherry, which was 80 degrees. So there's 80 degrees. That's cherry. And that represents 40 people. And the last one we drew was lemon, which represents 60 people. And the angle we used was 120, which is in here. And I'll just put our total people at the side. You probably won't need this, but just to be very, very safe, 180. And we've constructed a pie chart. Pie charts. SBA National 5 Apps, 2021, paper one, question 15. Stuart's monthly budget is 6 and 160 for rent and bills, 450 for food and socialising, 90 for savings. Construct a pie chart to solve information. I'm going to have to work out my angles here. To get my angles, I need the fractions. To get the fractions, I'm going to need the total. So, step one, add the numbers up. So underneath, I'm going to do 660 plus the 450 plus to 90. So that gives me 6 plus 5 is 11, plus 9 is 20, 6, 10, 12. So our total is 1,200. So that means that we've got 660 out of 1,200 for one of them, 450 out of 1,200 for the other one, and 90 out of 1,200 for the last one. And that's our fractions. Now we need to change them into uh, angles. So to get your angles, you need to times by 360. So let's simplify these first though. That's 66 out of 120. That is 45 out of 120. And that is 9 out of 120. You might be wondering why out of 120 instead of just simplifying completely because 120 goes into 360, so it's going to be easier. So for the first one, it's 66 out of 120 times 360. So that 360 divided by 120 is 3. So that is just 66 times 3. 3 times 66. 360 is 18. 360 is 84. That's 19. So I get 198 degrees for the first one. Similarly for this one, that's going to be 3 then times 45, which is 135 degrees. And the last one, so I've already done the work, it'll be 360 divided by 120 is 3 times 9, which is 18 degrees. So I've now got my three angles, so I can just shove them in the pie chart. 98 degrees, 135 degrees, 18 degrees. All right, how do we draw a pie chart? Well, we need a protractor, so I've got one prepared for us. So now we just need to draw it. So um, if there's anything above 180, I'll try and avoid that because my protractor only goes up to 180. So I'll start off with 135. So I get my protractor, I bring it in and we line it up over the zero and I'll zoom in so you can see this. So I'm going to draw the 135 now. So lining up my protractor nice and neatly. Make sure it goes through the zero and we get our pencil and we mark on where 135 is. Now I'm on the outside scale to the right, 135 is around here, 
So we just mark on 135 and we get our ruler out. So I'll just get my ruler and line it up through the dot. Now my, my dot might disappear because of the way my iPad is, but don't worry. I'll leave the ruler where it is so that it's lined up nice through the dot, as you can see. And we just move our protractor out of the way and we draw a line from the middle to the outside of my circle nice and neatly. And we've got our first line so we can get rid of our ruler. We no longer need it. Our next one we're going to draw is probably going to be the 18 degrees. So zooming in again, we know that's 135, so that's food and socialising. Let's just take a note of that. Food, socialising. That's 135 degrees. So our next one is 18 degrees. So we need to line that up. We line our girl up nice and neatly. So line our girl up nice and neatly. From the middle. To the outside. Through that new dot. Getting rid of my protractor. And just drawing a nice neat. And just drawing a nice neat line to the outside. So now we now know that that is our savings. And you can check this angle here, but if you've done everything right so far, then this other bit will be whatever's left, which is rent and belts. And that's us done there. SBA National 5 Applications and Maths 2019, Paper 1, Question 3. The pie chart shows the number of hours over time at 72 employees of a supermarket worked during one month. Calculate how many employees worked 15 plus hours over time. So let's have a look to see where that is. If we look at here, there's our 15 plus hours there. That represents 30 degrees. So we know that 30 degrees out of the total 360 degrees of uh, 72 employees. So we'll try to do a sum like this. We might as well simplify the fraction to make it easier. So that equals, taking the zeros off, 3 out of 36 of 72. 3 into 36, well, 3 goes into 36 12 times. So that's 1 12 of 72. So counting in 12s, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72 equals 6. 6 employees worked 15 plus hours overtime. So the probability that an employee chosen at random what nine or less hours. So nine or less hours means this segment here and this segment here. So we've got 180 degrees, that's half of them. So we need to work out how many people that is. Half of 72 is 36. Now we don't know how big this bit is, so we need to work that out. So let's add up all our angles that we've got. We've got 180, we've got 30. We've got 90, so that's leaving 9, 10, 11, 12, 20, 3, 60 degrees this bit. Now, we've already worked out 30 degrees, that was 6 people. So if 30 degrees is 6 people, 60 degrees must be double that, so that's 12 people. So the total number of people, 36 plus 12, out of the total number in people in total, which is 72, so 36 plus... 46, 48 out of 72 is our probability. But then we need to simplify all fractions. So let's half the numbers first. 24 and 36. Half them again. That's 12 and 18. Oh, I could keep halving. That is 6 and 9. And now I can't half, but 3 goes into both of them. 3 into 6 goes 2. 3 into 3 goes 9. Two thirds is the probability. You could have got there quicker if you picked a different number to divide by. Next green, National 5 Applications and Maths 2018, Paper 2, Question 4. Nicola has joined the gym. The pie chart shows the proportion of time that Nicola will spend on each type of workout exercise. So we've got warm up, cardio, resistance, cool down. She spent 1 hour 45 minutes in the gym. So that's the total of the pie chart. How long in minutes did she spend on resistance training? So I need to identify the bit that's resistance training. So it goes warm up. Cardiovascular is the light grey, resistance is the dark grey, so it's 144 degrees. So it's 144 out of 360 as a fraction because it's 360 degrees in a circle. So that's what fractions you spent, and it's times, I need to times by the time, but the time is 1 hour 45, 
So I want it all in minutes. So that's 105. So let's get my calculator for that then. 144 divided by 360 times 105 is 42 minutes. And we're done there.